Hey guys, let me know how the stream is sounding. Let me know if the sound is pretty good. Um, yeah, we're, I'm setting up the stream right now, so let me know if the sound is working. If you guys have any issues with the sound or with the video. Uh, Eugene should be over shortly. Alright, audio's looking not bad. Hey, what's up Aiden? How's the video doing? Um, should be pretty low latency, I hope. Trying to get that working. Can you guys see us alright? Maybe I'll lower this a little bit more for now. Alright, alright. Part of time. We are, Eugene should be over shortly, and then we'll get cooking. Cook, 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 cooking. Um, yeah. Just came back from work, dealing with some stuff, but other than that, it's all copacetic, if you know what I mean. We almost forgot the most important thing. Forgot. I almost forgot this, the joke book. I think my phone went off too. Still setting up. It's on right now. Yeah, I was testing it out to make sure it was working. So, oh, okay. but you don't have to come on yet. I'm just talking to the people. Oh, sick. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eugene just walked in through the door. Um, we'll start in a little bit. We're a little bit early. We're like 26 minutes early. So, are we doing that later? Yeah, it's easier because in my room, it's kind of like tiny. Yeah. The other thing we forgot is that every stream there's a costume, like I said. I follow through on my promises. If you want to get me on stream, otherwise I'll just be sitting here talking to people. We'll just be watching you <laughs> Yeah, we usually just chat for a little bit before things start. So. I don't want to watch or have people watch me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eugene's just off camera a little bit, but we're we're chilling, making sure the sound is fine. Uh, I have slugs here. Yeah, I got slugs on my my computer. You got? I I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's there's slugs right here on my computer. I got them up in NorCal. Where did I get that? I got them at this national park. Well, national state park. Uh, I forget the name of it, but I have the stickers and basically when I was taking a trip up to up north there you would see those all on the ground everywhere because it's so wet 
And then I was like, oh, this would be great to bring back. So I, I brought some back. And now I just keep them on my computer. I kept them on my work computer. Uh, Angela and the other people had like penises and butts in the boob ones. But what? have you seen those? It's like a cute no. penis and a cute butt. But since I'm a guy, you know, that would not be very <laughs> work appropriate. So I, I, I opted for the banana slug. <laughs> um yeah that's about that's that's the same old same old who's on right now uh who's in the chat there's aiden turk freddy um anyone else in the chat i have this is gonna be i might take this off later because i don't have i don't have actual fingers to use so i might have to uh <laughs> find another way to make this work um there's nine people in the chat right now oh shit i need I need to tweet out that we're going to be starting this thing. Yeah, All right. How do you guys, how do most of you guys know Eugene or of Eugene's handle? I'm just curious. Man, this is like impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got, I got. Wait, there's a guy in the inside the shark. Save me! <laughs> oh. Mr. Miguel, Caleb Carr. Hey guys, wait. How do you guys, how do you guys know of Eugene, or how, how'd you guys find his work, or what do you know him for? They don't. They know D Wulo. <laughs> <laughs> like the shining. Yeah. Oh, walking. right. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy in a suit and a guy eating Chipotle. Yeah. <laughs> Eugene, the special guest for tonight. Yeah. Ooh. He's gonna talk about storyboards. Mm -hmm. I don't know what anything. I feel like I feel like you taught everyone everything already. There's nothing more to teach. No, you have, I feel like everyone has a different approach, so it's always good to hear something different. The last time Arthur came on, I learned some new stuff too, so I was like, oh, this is a good oh, yeah. time for me to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was good. I learned some stuff too. But then now, like, I'm so hyper aware of, like, his tricks. Oh, yeah. So now, like, everything that he makes that, that I look at, I'm like, ah. Yeah, like, I know what trees. you did, you <laughs> cheater. <laughs> Copy paste tool. Yeah. Grouping. The fuck? Yeah. <laughs> What's grouping? It's like, um, when. He, he does this thing where like he would do like a like a big tree and a medium tree like overlapping each other and then like a small tree like a little bit farther from from Oh no <laughs> Oh wait hold on that let me get a picture for <laughs> <laughs> Your arm like sticking out of the, the mouth is pretty great. This is the only way I can like type or do anything because my, my fins don't have any holes. Oh no. So I, I can't even like click the mouse very well. Um yeah. so big medium small and like a... Yeah, and then like two of them are together and then the other one's like a little bit separate. Mm. It's just like for like variety and contrast. Right. right. And now like I'm like every tree that he draws is like there it is again. Oh, there's a big one. There's a little yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. There's or like mountains. One. Yeah. You can you can sit down on the chair. I oh, know I'm good. Are I'm you gonna sure? Go upstairs in a little bit. Yeah. You sure? You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, people said they know you from Voltron. Voltron. Oh. Uh, someone found you on Twitter a while ago. Know him through me. Oh, I guess Aiden met it. And, but I've seen Core on parts of Voltron. Turk says, I still thirst for knowledge. <laughs> uh, Aiden says, he works on Core, right? Question mark. Uh, yeah, I did. Season, or book three and four. 
Um, I brought some animatics, and I'll probably show some of my sections for that. I don't think I could show the entire episode ah, for the yeah. animatic, but... Wait, you didn't work on season one? mm no. Oh, I, shit, I didn't know that. I think all the all the in-house board artists started on book three and book four. Oh, so it was all overseas, right? Yeah, book one and two were overseas. Yeah. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm... Interesting. Inter- well, we'll save all that juicy stuff for later. You can show us whatever you want to show it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell some jokes. Have a good time. What do you guys usually talk about? Like, honestly, I have no, like, I have no agenda or, like, yep. uh, bullet points or anything. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of winging this, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that's what I do. It's super <laughs> informal, but <laughs> Base- I think... I think this might work the best if you guys have questions, and um, I'm good at answering questions, but I'm not good at lecturing. So, yeah, that post your chat, post your questions in the chat. Uh, if you have anything to ask him specifically, or if you have any questions about storyboard, or you know, you can be asking like, what's up with food he likes? You know, what's his favorite <laughs> anime? Uh, Turk says you did a panel at AX a couple of years ago, right? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Was Turk there? Were you there, Turk? Turk light. Uh, but yeah, mostly the stream is um, just random stuff. Usually, I have people submit things and then I'll, I'll review it. Uh, it used to be where I would have like an agenda to talk about, but that yeah. got too complicated. So then okay. I just like last week's stream was people submitted stuff and I drew over okay. like figure drawing stuff over That's it. Cool. But then the one before was like shot choice and composition more. So, but then when people come on like you and Arthur, you just talk about whatever you want. It's not okay. like you have to revise anything. Okay. Turk said, uh, yeah, he was there last, last, or at the panel. Oh, cool. So. He said, or Turk, I'm not sure if Turk is a guy or a girl, but I sure was, but I was too nervous to go talk to you. Oh, you should have said hi. Yeah, I should say hi, Eugene. He's a nice guy. And if you want some real help, you should fight him in Street Fighter. (laughs) Find him online. (laughs) He'll teach you a real lesson if you meet him in Street Fighter. That's if you can beat him. That's that's how you, yeah, yeah, beat some ass. Beat some butt. Beat some butts. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little bit of time. I think it's All only right. seven forty-four, so we won't start until eight. All right, let me, let me just prep this stuff. Oh, let me make sure there's room for you in there. That was in the back. Uh, what? Well, I have so many things plugged in. I need to make sure. Uh, let me pull something out. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> Wait, you gotta stay there. Uh, uh, sh- is it the flash or the portable? <laughs> I think it's the flash. Drop. Wait, which one? I have to figure out which one it's saving to, otherwise I'll get boom. Oh, it doesn't matter. Haha. <laughs> Wait, don't look at me. <laughs> this is what it looks like. This. It's, it's kind of disturbing. <laughs> this is streaming guys this is top tier streaming uh all right question how do you know each other me and Diwu? you and i go way back to uh I don't know if you guys are familiar with a Cartoon Network show called uh, Generator Rex, but uh, we worked on that show together. That was both of our first uh, full-time jobs as a, as a storyboard artist. Yeah. And that's how we met. Oh. <laughs> Did you want water or anything? Or- oh, I bought, I bought this. Okay. This thing is so hot. I mean, are we are we doing soju shots? What are we doing? Oh my god, <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's a little spicy already. We can. Hey, yeah, Generics was a good show. It was it was super fun. Uh, I learned most of what I learned on Generics. Sure. Jerry, you can use a mouse. I'm not. I'm pretty bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the Cintiq pen is next to you.
Yeah, I actually work with Kenji now, who is a director on Generator X, and Walter no. Gatis, J T U S, and he's also on. Yes. Uh, he's he Whoa. was the. Cut and handled and then. Terminate. What the. F okay. Wait. How do I? Normally, there's a window that pops up. Oh really? What? Cause, Cause uh, I put like a I put like a password thing on it. Wait, hold on. Let's let's try this. Thing. Uh, go uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. I guess so. I don't use the Samsung portable stuff. Okay. Oh, there. Try click on that. Whatever that thing is at the bottom. Ah, here you go. There you go. Um, yeah, Walt, find Walter online too. He, he's a character designer. He was a character designer on the on the the first. He basically him and Jose did all the major character design stuff for Generator X. I'm not sure if he was only season one or if he was more than season one, but you should ask him. Oh my god, I'm like sweating. <laughs> you should take that. Oh, caps is. No, I, got, I have to keep it on until we start. I promised. Until after the joke, at least. <laughs> <clears throat> Holy smacks. That's a terabyte? Oh, yeah. I bought a terabyte solid state drive. <laughs> Damn. What a baller. It's really small, too, that, that thing. It's about the same size as mine, and mine's only 500 gigs, I oh, think. Really? So I guess it, it's pretty amazing. Woo! Uh, Kenny says, what's the hardest thing about being a director? Wait, we'll say, we'll save those professional questions for when the stream starts. Cause that, I feel like more people would like to know those questions. Um, let's see. Whoa. Here comes a quick time. And then when we go to the the to show them what you're looking at, click on storyboard review UI. Oh, uh, okay. So it, it just goes to this screen. It'll go to a different layout. So this <laughs> one's like camera, but if you click on that, you can click on it right now to see what it looks like. And it'll just oh, whoever's cool. on the screen, it'll keep uh, us up in the corner. And this is the normal one? Yep. You just go back to that one. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, what's your recent favorite movie? What did I like recently? John Wick 3. John Wick 3 was good, yeah. I really liked that movie. Um, very simple, really great action. Um, I mean, the story wasn't anything like, you know, amazing, but straightforward enough, fun. I haven't seen it yet. No, you haven't seen it yet? You should check it out. There's a lot of fun action. Yeah? Yeah. I think the last movie I saw was Spider-Man Far From Home, and that was... Oh, yeah, that was good. I, I didn't care for it too much. I think, like, I think we didn't get enough of Spider-Man being Spider-Man. It felt like uh, a, a lesser version of Spider-Man 2 because it's, like, the same plot points where, like, he loses his power and he doesn't he has, like, a crisis of character and he's like, oh, right. do I want to be Spider-Man for the love of my life? Right. Da, da, da. So, I think Spider-Man 2 is really good, but it's kind of, it. well, it's not too dated. But. Hey, Min Mace going on hello it is 751 so we got nine minutes no oh, you don't like the the grip yeah i did the steve on thing <laughs> so good steve on. oh oh papa on yeah if you guys don't know who steve on is he, he does a storyboarding class as well you can find him on just type in steve a h n he's everywhere you know who he is i'm sure you, you've seen his stuff before uh, mine. He's been teaching his class for quite a while now. That's why. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of. I feel like there's a really good movie I watched recently. I can't think of anything at all. I still haven't seen. I haven't seen Joker yet, but I keep hearing good things about Joker. I'm on the fence about that just because of the the context of the movie, how people are like, oh, it's kind of like an incel type oh, yeah, thing. Yeah, people were saying that, yeah. So I'm like, ah, I don't know. But I heard it. I don't know. Yeah, another topic. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't seen the movie, so. Uh, what I'm, about... I'm excited for Zombieland 2, though. 
I, oh yeah. yeah, I love zombies. Um, when's that supposed to come out? I think this week. Yeah, I think it drops this week. Then. Oh shit! Yeah. Wow, yeah. are you going to dress up for Halloween this year? Mm, probably not. <laughs> you want to be the Monopoly man? What Monopoly man? Yeah, I have a Monopoly man costume. You can borrow if you want. Am I going to fit? <laughs> uh, I can show it to you. <laughs> You don't have all you have to provide is a suit, but I have everything else. Oh, like the mustache and the monocle? Uh wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, does he have a monocle? It, it, he does, I think. Well, it's not. Or is it just a top hat? I don't think he does have a monocle, right? Here, you can you can try it. <laughs> The people on the stream don't really like it too much because it's scary. Which is true, but <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about storyboards today, guys. Yeah, teach uh, teach us how how to make your millions and millions <laughs> storyboard. <laughs> my millions and millions of panels. Oh my god, this is scratching my no. That's why I said too. I was yeah. like, oh, it's cutting me up. But you can be the Monopoly map if you want. Uh, no, I'm good. <laughs> Fine, okay. <laughs> you can be a hungry, hungry hippo. I got one of those too. Yeah, how many monsters do you have? I have a couple. Someone was giving them away, so I just picked them up. Uh, uh, Raven says, Yeah, I'm kind of surprised with the comments I've been hearing about Joker. Uh, someone said, I met him at Lightbox, thought I'd be older. Well, Steve is, he's he looks young for his age. Don't let his his youthful face and his dashing good looks fool you. He's an old man, but he looks young. Oh, yeah. It's all that Korean uh, night routine. I don't know if he does it, but it's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, oh, Kenny says, I had a very awkward conversation with Steve Vaughn. Shove ran away. Um, Turk says, I'm going to dress up as an Amazon box with legs for Halloween. Someone said, what do you think of Promare? Oh. Promare? Promare? I... So I can't give it a fair review because I, I kind of watched the second half only because I had a meeting that went through the movie. Really? And then I had to like, literally like rush like to the theater, and I made it halfway to when they like were doing that giant exposition. So I can't give a fair review of it. <laughs> mm. But it was kind of crazy. A lot of beautiful animation. Um, Action was cool. Uh, I, I like a lot of the uh, the colors are great, but yeah, that's the most I can say. Yeah, a lot of people we know worked on it. Well, maybe not a lot. Some people worked on it, which is kind of crazy how the oh, two yeah. studios are mixing. Uh, Will Fang, Sunjin on Tim. Tim Ridley did some stuff. Kang. Kang did some stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. He. I heard he helped design like some of the language, the fire language and stuff. How it looked, the visual language. That's oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. That's what Arthur was saying, at least. But did Arthur work on it? I don't think so. Mm. Uh, how to storyboard by landing on New York Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. That's that's pretty good. Yeah. Oh man. <clears throat> or get out of the deadline free card <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Deadline do not pass go do not collect 200 <laughs> go straight to storyboard jail <laughs> is there something with the actual name of the game Monopoly, Monopoly? storyboard walk storyboard <laughs> <laughs> nice what other I haven't played Monopoly in forever like that's a game that is not that's a game that you don't really play as an adult too much because everyone gets upset. <laughs> <laughs> Settlers of Catan. Oh, I love Settlers. Yeah. Have you... Oh, man, we should play Settlers. I want to get a second camera so we can play board games and then point one camera down at the board oh, and then oh, one camera fun. of us playing. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that. Because I like Settlers a lot. And then Rebecca has never played Settlers before. and so Just what? I think she would really love it, to be honest. Dude, that's crazy. Right? How has she not played Sandler's? Is she pretty competitive too? She is. At least that with some games. Not all games. But oh, that's like, right. You're saying like she was competitive with Smash. Yeah. I remember that. 
she get she when she plays she's like i can't can't blink she's like yeah. so into it that her eyes get all dried out so it's my advantage <laughs> <laughs> i feel like settlers kind of brings out the worst in everyone definitely brings out the worst in me <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, Settlers is so much fun. Oh, you should. If you come by on Friday, we might play uh, Drawful, which is really fun. What's Drawful? So basically, it's a Switch game, and then you play it through your phone, and you're given a prompt. It's kind of like the game where you pass around the cards, but instead, and everyone draws on it, but instead, you're given a prompt on your phone. It might say, like, um, Nacho, Nacho Party. And so you draw it on your phone, and then it sends it to the screen, and everyone has to guess what the actual word is, but you can also. So I'll send the picture to the screen, then you get uh, put up a name or title it, and everyone gets to do that as well. And oh. whenever someone guesses yours as their thing, they get points. It's basically like um, picta Pictionary, but a little bit more complicated. And then you can also have people online playing. So people online can vote on which one they think is the right title. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's cool. But yeah, it that was fun. fun. It was fun last night. It was uh, myself, Arthur. <clears throat> Rebecca, Tenny, and Grace. Grace come. And that was pretty nuts. And then there's like a couple other ones. There's like a, a factoid one. There's like a lying one where you try to lie about yourself. It's kind of like our uh, two truths and a lie. Okay. But then with with online stuff and like everyone does it. Mm. Left shark. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess technically right shark, right? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the right hand shark. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I only found out about Catan Latin Min Maze. Wow. I feel like Catan's like a college game. I feel like everybody in college <clears throat> plays Catan. Right, yeah. I feel like... I mean, I found out about it pretty late, too. Like, it, it wasn't when I grew up, for sure. It was definitely, oh. it was definitely later. Like, college sounds right. I found out in college too. Yeah. That's when I played. I played a lot of it in college for some reason. Listen to Tenny and Grace at Lightbox also. Yeah, they were there with uh, Selena Kim, who's also a great viz dev person. Do you know Selena? Uh, I think I've seen her Instagram. Yeah, I think I follow her. Yeah. Some good, good stuff. Yeah. Solid, solid stuff. Solid, solid. <laughs> Okay, I think it's 8 o'clock, so we're going to start. Like I said earlier, post your questions in the chat for Eugene. Uh, if you haven't followed him yet, definitely follow him up here. I'm going to point to the... Whoop, follow him. He's on Instagram and Twitter. So follow him there. And yeah, so we're going to start. Welcome to the stream, Eugene. Thank you for having me. No, thanks for coming by. It's always fun to have other people. <laughs> Normally, it's just me in my room yelling at the, the computer. So it's a lot more fun with two people. Right. And you're, you're always dressed as a shark, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are a shark. I am a shark. Yeah. I was, I was born in the water. <laughs> I was born in it. <laughs> <laughs> you're either a shark or a sheep. But if you guys know that reference, you can type it out. All right. So we always start with a joke. Okay. It's a really bad joke. I'll, I'll read it to you. And you <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm trying to find... Uh, a very specific like uh what do you call it halloween joke because halloween's coming up and that's why i'm dressed as a shark every stream i've done in the month of october i've dressed up as something oh okay so last that week was sense. monopoly man the week before was pencil i was a pencil <laughs> 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 and also the um uh, also a hungry hippo okay this this might get close enough what growls as it floats to the ground Oh crap! I oh, lost the page. <laughs> Hold on, guys. This is not working out so well. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we'll just take off the the top part. Oh shit! Oh, there you go. I found it. What growls as it floats to the ground? That is a bear. A shoot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oof. A bear should get was, it, guys. That was pretty good. <laughs> All right, so this is the the stream. It's usually about storyboarding and animation, and it's 
you can talk about it, your experiences in animation and anything you want, really. <coughs> in terms um, of- all right. Uh, I guess maybe a little bit of a bio. Um, so uh, I studied art at a Pasadena Art Center, College of Design. And uh, I think during my like last year there, I got an internship at Cartoon Network, which is probably where I, I probably like have seen you before as an intern, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, no. I saw you when I was doing revisions on Rex because then TJ was like, hey, go down to Rex. I remember one day TJ was like, TJ Collins. He's like, hey, go down and talk mm-hmm. to the Rex people because we need supplies. And I met you then. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, at that time I was just an intern and like I was just doing kind of like kind of like gopher work, like you know, just making photocopies of storyboards and uh, whatnot. Um, so I had a lot of downtime too. And during that downtime, I was working on uh, my storyboard homework for school at the time. Mm-hmm. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> and. Uh, while I was working on my storyboard homework, uh, one of the directors came by, Dan Reba, who's super amazing, um, legend. And uh, he came by and he saw me working on storyboards and he was like, hey, like, those look pretty good. Like, do you want to do some freelance? I was like, what? And, you know, I, I was a student at the time. So, I mean, obviously any student would say yes at that opportunity, right? So uh, I said yes. And he's like, cool, awesome. Yeah, we need like new blood in the industry and like, he recommended me to another director to work under called uh, Butch Lukic, who taught me a lot. Like he taught he taught me a lot of the foundation that I know today. And I don't know if you have you ever worked under him before or like very uh, briefly or. He taught me when I was an intern, but not. I don't think I've ever worked directly under him for storyboards. I did mm-hmm. work under another director, and he was supervising directing that person. So technically, mm-hmm. he saw my work somewhere. I see. I see. <laughs> yeah, but. I guess I can say I was super fortunate, like super lucky. And I, I think that's part of it too, you know. Um, I've known some very talented artists from my from my school. Just we all thought he would get a job, but like he didn't for like a year or two years. And, oh damn. Which is crazy. It's just like how are you not getting a job when you're talented than everyone? But I think it's kinda of timing and uh luck too, you know. Like no matter how skilled you are, like a production might not need your abilities you know at that moment at a given time and moment so um i i just got very fortunate ben 10 happened to be looking for board artists and uh i happened to be there working on my storyboard homework so, <laughs> um, i mean yeah that's kind of how i got in and i started doing freelance uh storyboards for them like taking about like five pages of script and oh man that was before photoshop yeah Yeah. (laughs) or storyboard pro or storyboard pro (laughs) so i was drawing on paper which was insane like oh my god like you can only draw on an 11 by 17 sheet of paper and there's only two panels like this and then you you would have to write all the action and stuff and if you would draw any other extra poses within the next panel you would have to get a post-it draw over it and then like almost like animate with like post-its basically yeah and then you would tape that post-it onto the second panel and then that's like one sheet of a scene (laughs) it's just like so much work it was crazy um so i don't miss that at all (laughs) you would have to walk around with like stacks of papers like this like if you dropped it and it wasn't numbered you're just like fucked (laughs) and then like you know everything was uh just super analog man like Photoshop or uh, Toon Boom, you can just like flip horizontal and then uh, you can literally look at it, you know, mirrored. But then with paper, you you would have to flip it over and, you know, turn it up and like look at it like this. And you're like, oh man, my drawing looks like crap. Like, all right, I got to go back and then do it again. Do it again. Okay, that looks good, I guess. And then next. And then, oh my God. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of eraser. Uh, was it called eraser lint or yeah 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 just a lot of yeah i remember (laughs) being like really sweaty so like my pages would get like a little bit wet and the pencil would smear a little bit oh yeah yeah "Ah." yeah. that's right oh yeah you're right yeah no i would always have a piece of like a sheet of paper underneath my hand like this and then i would draw like this and then move the paper and then draw like that draw like that and oh man i don't miss paper 
Yeah, I don't oh, miss okay. it at all. There's some questions. I feel like I've seen that on some... What's AT boards? Yeah, what's AT... Uh, Kylie says, I feel like I've seen that on some AT boards. What's AT boards? And then Minmay says, was Korra done in Pencil 2? I think Korra... Yes, the first season was. Holy shit. I think. Oh, because it was done overseas? Yeah. I think it was done... Yeah, yeah. I remember um, seeing photos of Joaquim and Ryu and... Uh, Brian and Mike like in the uh, in the gym in Nickelodeon and then they would just literally post up like paste up all the boards holy shit and that's how they would like pitch it yeah so I remember I think I'm pretty sure yeah that was pencil that's insane th- maybe some photoshop um, whenever they did their notes on top of it but book three that's when they I think fully transitioned into storyboard pro that's so long. Like that yeah. was like we were already using Storyboard yeah. Pro for a while. Yeah, because book two was also done in I think Japan. So oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they might have been working on Storyboard Pro like at Nickelodeon, um, but Japan definitely was not working with Storyboard Pro, <laughs> or I'm pretty sure they weren't. I don't know. But... Uh, oh, Adventure Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think I feel like I've seen Adventure Board. Or not adventure board, <laughs> adventure time boards done in paper while like we were there. Like, was that show happening when we were there? I think it was, so. Right? Because I remember getting an Adventure Time hat when I was. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah! Oh my god! Oh yeah! I had a fin hat that I'd put on when like let's do like serious like when I had to like really work I'd put on a hat and just be, like start working that way and I was like, uh, I find different ways to kind of like focus and like right. it's either a hat, it's Space Jam theme song, right. My very fond memory of working with Diwoo on January Rex was we would be there over the weekend and there would be no AC. Oh my god. god so god. Diwoo would just be in the Adventure Time hat but shirtless. <laughs> 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 uh, and then we would just be sweating our asses off like working on storyboards because I think we had Cintiqs at that moment but it would get super hot. So um, It would get so hot in that building. And yeah. then they're also doing construction on the floor of, above us, so then all the like the fine dust would come to us. Oh, floor. yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, it's the worst. I was looking at some the other day and saw some extra poses on the side of the panel. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, I think most most studios don't. <laughs> hey, Katrin. I actually hey. work yeah. near Katrin now. She's like a couple of desks over me from me. Oh really? Yeah, she's on a different. We can't talk about what we're on. Oh okay, okay. She works in the Crazy. work in the same room. Small world. Yeah. Man, yeah, she was. What were you in? What were you interned on, Katrin? Like, was it was it Gen Rex, or was it Ben Ten? It might have been Ben Ten. Okay. There were a couple of people on Gen Rex that ended up going. Gen Rex. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, that's right. Was I there? I think I think that's how I met Katrin. So. Oh, Ben Ten first, and then Gen Rex. Okay. Wait, how do we not? How do I not remember that? Because I was there for the whole time of Gen Rex, unless it was after Storyboards was done. But I don't. Honestly, it's it's been so long. It's been like <laughs> nine, yeah, it's been like nine years. It's like oh. yeah. Yeah, she was there. Oh, wow, crazy. There, there are a couple of people that have gone through Gen Rex that end up like with jobs now. I think like uh, Jay Collinger is another one that I remember, and a couple other people, but. It was the first year interns were paid. Oh, that's right. I I wasn't paid. I wasn't paid either. No! <laughs> Cartoon Network! Give me my money! No, um, yeah. Uh, man, I lost track of what I was talking about. So where'd you go after Gen Rex? Oh, Gen Rex. We both went to Motor City. Yeah. And then uh, after that, we both went to Venture Brothers. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, man. That is yeah. true. Yeah, Dio and I worked together for a long time, up until, I think, I went to Korra, and then you went to Turbo, I think, right? Yeah, or the Amazon projects with Sungjin. With Sungjin, right. And then right. Turbo. Yeah, so I think Dio left New York. So there's a moment in our history together that we were both in New York. He was there for, I think, six months, right? Yeah, six months. And then I was there for a year and a half, and uh, we both worked on Venture Brothers uh, Season 5, I believe out in new york and uh yeah. i think Diu had moved back first he worked at titmouse after that uh titmouse la 
and then I think fast forward another year and a half from when he left, I got the job on Cora. So yeah, and then, and then that's when I moved back to oh, <laughs> uh. and then that's when I moved back to uh, L.A. Nah, was it that long ago? Wow. I mean, New York was 2011, 2012. Jeez. I left because it was getting too cold. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting too cold. Oh, that's right. You were never there for a uh, winter, huh? And the hurricane that you had to... Oh, Was that my... Hurricane Sandy? Yes, that was. Oh, Dude, that was insane. <laughs> I had no water and electricity for, I think, three days straight. So, like... Really? So, like, dude, I mean... Sorry, this is TMI, but I didn't poop for like two days because I, I couldn't flush. There's like you, you you don't want to stink up the bathroom either. So, like, man, that was insane. What? Like, so did you like go out to like like coffee shops or something? Like, because the power is off, you can't really do anything, right? Like, I don't remember what I did. I, I felt like I we just like hung out because it was like raining the entire time outside and like windy. So we stayed indoors. Um, yeah. But at a certain point, like. Me and uh, my girlfriend at the time, we were living together, and uh, uh, we went, we like left up, like upper Manhattan, and then we like took a taxi up there because we, I think there's still no electricity and water for like half a week. Holy shit. Yeah. And then we were just like, we can't do this. Like, we gotta take a shower. We gotta, you know, take care of our bodily functions. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, so we took a taxi up to like 40th street and like literally everyone was doing the same thing. So it was like, it felt like a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> like, it was insane. Like everyone was out on the streets, like fleeing up North. Like everyone had their like traveling bags and their like luggage. Like, Holy crap. At a certain point, the taxi just couldn't get any further at all. So we got off the taxi and like, we walked, I think like 20 blocks or something. Yeah. And everyone was in like a chase, like ATM, like room, like charging their phone or like, yeah, it was like, it was mayhem. Yeah, that was insane. Wow, I didn't know any about any of that. That's, yeah, that's why I left New York. <laughs> as soon as it got cold, I was like, I'm out of here. This is too cold for me. Favorite and least favorite kind of scene to storyboard. Ooh, favorite scene is, you know, it used to be action scenes, but. Now that I am older, and, uh, <laughs> it's a lot more work. I, I kind of like acting scenes now. Um, I, I feel like with acting scenes, um, you can really play with composition and storytelling. And uh, honestly, it's just a lot less drawings. Too, so. <laughs> and which you know, which I which I find a lot of interest doing. Um, finding a really awesome shot, and just composing like. I guess numerous amounts of characters in like a scene, like finding smart ways to do that and like economical ways where, you know, you're not killing overseas animators. Cause I mean, a, a lot of the animation done here now is done overseas. And um, sometimes when a board isn't done economically, like uh, you're doing like a full body shot of like a person like walking into the horizon. It's just like, oh man you know how hard that is to draw right like you want to cut them off at their feet so you know you don't want to show that that feet like actually touching the ground um i mean those are all like you know 2d animation cheese i'm sure like 3d it's a little bit easier to do probably um but shoot i lost track of what were were we talking about again oh least least, least, least in favorite kind Um, of scenes to storyboard yeah and then action scenes i i love too um I mean, those, I think getting that handed out to me from a director, I'm just like, oh, man. Like, I, <laughs> I, I just I just did an action scene for the last episode. Like, give me a break. Um, but when I do get, like, you know, down and dirty, like, with an action scene, like, I get really into it. So, and I, I'm sure you all feel the same way, too. Like, that's, like, you know, the Sakuga scene, right? Like, you want to you wanna put all your 200% effort in and uh whatnot and just you know make an an exciting sequence and uh just a kick-ass like section that people would be amazed you know um i think least favorite is drawing armies i don't know why i don't know why our all our scripts have armies in it and like 
I don't think the, I don't think the writers understand that we have to draw every single one of those <laughs> bastards <laughs> in armies, or just any group of like like twenty people like in a scene. You just have to keep track of all that. I mean, like I said earlier, that, that it's fun. Yes, it's fun sometimes, but when they're all doing stuff, like if it's an action scene with like ten people, like oh my god, no, please no. I'm it's surprised. Yeah, thinking about like your work history, I'm like, man, almost every show you worked on has like an army battle. Yeah, and I'm just dude. like, oh, it's rough. <laughs> I mean, I, I I get it. Like, as a story, you want to sell like the scale of um, a situation. You know, like it's escalated to the point where there's an army of them or something. And yeah, it, it does feel better that way. But at the same time, like. I feel like in anime, Japanese anime, like some of the most like memorable fight scenes are just between two guys, you know, Naruto versus Sasuke or um, what else is there? Sword of the Stranger. Sword of the Stranger. Yeah. Uh, what was his name? Na, na, uh, Nanashi? Nanashi. Nanashi versus the the Gaijin guy. <laughs> <laughs> the Guaylo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there's, there's ways to do like army sequences like i feel like berserk does it pretty good mm. the berserk movies um but i mean some of it is in 3d though and then i mean you see even at that point like the 2d animators don't want to animate armies <laughs> that they've you know animated them in 3d instead so like if there's any way to avoid that like i would not want to do that <laughs> at all. i think yeah but basically the thing i hate the most with storyboards is drawing a lot of people on screen <laughs> that's my least favorite for oh, sure yeah. for sure or just any very technical thing where um i'm trying to think of an example but just i guess for example like in the script it's like oh like this character gets from point a to point b but they don't really describe how they get from point a to point b because there's lava in the middle and it's just like <laughs> wait didn't they think this through like how am I supposed to figure? Okay, all right. Now I have to figure this out. Okay, and then like, I mean that's part of our jobs, you know, to kind of find those those holes and fill them and uh, make sense of it. So, like, I don't know. Maybe this character has like air bending or whatever, and then he does an air bending jump over the lava, and then that's my solve. I mean that's a very easy solve, but normally it's harder than that, which makes me annoyed at those <laughs> those parts of the script. <laughs> Is there any more questions? Uh, why don't you show some stuff for now, and then we'll hold off on what references would you find for those action sequences by Kenny, and then Jordan says, saw that Kaya versus Ming Hua scene you did circulating on Twitter. Oh, cool. And then, any, Caleb, any tips Thank on you. drawing lots of people fast? But why don't you show some stuff first, and then okay. we can maybe you can talk about some of that cool. stuff in relation to that. Cool. Just because I feel like, the people came here to see your work. They want to see you jam out on stuff. So I, I'm not going to scan through the entire animatic uh, for obvious reasons, but... Um, oh, hold on. Let me turn on the sound just in case. Oh, shit. I can't find my mouth. Oh, wait. Hold on the... Hold on. Wait, sorry. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, no, no, no. You're all good. Oh, no. I'll just play out the audio. Never mind. We're cool. Yeah. We're cool. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. So I guess this is also the segue with Kenny... Who mentioned? Oh, you know, is it? No, oh, Jordan. Sorry, Jordan mentioned uh, the Kaya versus Minghua scene. Uh, it's in this animatic. So. <laughs> oh shit. Um, is I, this all your work in, in this one animatic? Um, no, 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 no. So it's a combination of three board artists. Uh, on my on our team was it was me, Olga, Natasha, and uh, I think Will Ruzika at this time. And oh then, shit. And then Will Ruzika swapped with Hyunju for season four. So we got Hyunju for season four. Yeah. And, and they're all they're all super amazing, amazing board artists. Um Yeah, Natasha I'm working with Natasha I worked with Natasha and Hyunju on Troll Hunters and now uh, I'm working with Natasha on another project. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Hyunju I don't think Hyunju's been by yet, but she's who she won an Annie for her stuff on Troll Hunters, so Badass. Very badass. Yeah. Um so yeah, uh for this episode we called it season three episode 11 i think i guess it is episode 11 for book three right so i boarded basically this whole action scene with uh 
the Red Lotus versus Tenzin, uh, Bumi, and Kaya. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Yeah, this was actually this this almost killed me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was handing out a little bit too much in this section, so uh, oh fuck. <laughs> um, um, the uh, assistant director Olga uh, helped me out a lot. She saved my life on this episode. <laughs> so I, I I actually managed to rough this entire section. But um, she helped me with all the um, – God, I forgot his name. What's what's this kid's name, Stream? <laughs> um, Sean from Street Fighter 3 Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, she helped me with this section. And then – Kai. Kai, yes. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I am – I feel ashamed for a person that worked on court. <laughs> 10 points to Gryffindor. Yeah. Kai and Janora. I remember Janora. So, um, uh, I, I and, didn't remember any of their names. Um, so Olga helped me clean up a lot of these sections with Kai and Janora. And then I mainly just focused on this uh, Tenzin versus Zaheer. And then uh, this is the... Oh, so this is the Minghua Kai scene. Uh, I don't know if Jordan wanted to link that Sakagaboru thing from Twitter so you guys can see like the differences between final animation and boards. I think that's always fun to look at. Yeah. Um, but uh, I will play this section. Or actually, you know what? I'll just I'll start from here. I'll just start this action scene. I think season three was my favorite season. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. That was definitely my favorite too. So I think this is already in the you know in the middle of the battle. So Tenzin and Zaheer are kind of digging it out, and the the interesting note I got from Brian on this section was that he wanted the fight to kind of keep like escalating in terms of uh, geography. Like he kind of wanted them to kind of climb up and higher and higher uh, while using their airbending, you know. And Zaheer specifically uses more of like a parkour style airbending because he's like self-taught, and then Tenzin's very uh, you know, he's taught by Aang, so, and who was taught by the Air Monks. Um, so he's very traditional in terms of his fighting style. But it was, like, a very interesting thing to kind of keep that in mind uh, with uh, just choreographing the fight scene to move vertically upwards. Oh, my God. You animated yeah. the water, too? Like, you colored it? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Damn, man. There's so many drawings. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot. Especially because they give us reference to, they give us video, martial arts video, a video reference. So that kind of adds a little bit more poses too. Because it just doesn't look the same without that extra, like, subtle, nuanced move, you know? Um, but yeah. Oh, that's like the first thing she said. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you think you learned the most, or what project do you think you learned the most on, in terms of like where you are? I think Cora, yeah. for sure. Cora was definitely like the heaviest like mileage. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I I wish I had some of my boards from when I first started on Cora. Man, they were so bad. Like really? I mean, like I, I guess they were fine, but like um, I felt like so like basically I was handed. This th this was my first action section in on Korra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it was always a uh, will beforehand, but then this time they kind of threw me a bone and let me uh, give it a shot. And um, I guess they they really dug what I did. And after that, like they gave me they kept giving me action sequences <laughs> after that. But I did all the talking stuff beforehand, and like even then, I think just getting the because I wasn't very used to drawing like like anatomically correct like proportion type of characters like i worked on like motor city generator rex and stuff i mean generator rex is kind of close but it's still very cartoony you know cora was definitely you know you're exercising those proportions a lot those very realistic proportions and yeah. um just honestly like all those re uh, those video references i got for the martial arts helped me turn the character as well um so references super important guys um like i try to do as much as i can out of my head you know but at, at times it just doesn't look right either um 
and it's best to just like either like shoot video reference of yourself or if you can't do martial arts <laughs> uh you look online right you go to youtube like we have youtube now which is like amazing you just look up like i don't know shaolin kung fu whatever and then yeah you can find some good reference points from there as well or just look up other anime fights right like exactly yeah, <laughs> still, yeah totally yeah i mean i mean for i think for this section i definitely looked at other like fight sequences as well um I probably looked at Sword of the Stranger. Honestly, I don't remember ex exactly what I looked at for this section, um, but it was probably Sword of the Stranger. Every everyone that watched. was big, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any questions on this? Uh, how long do you get to board clean something big like this? I guess it depends on uh, depends sequence to se sequence. But do you remember from one sequence specifically? So. I remember with this, um, we had two weeks, two weeks to rough, and then three weeks to clean. I think. Damn, that's still pretty short. Yeah, so we had five weeks total, and this section was. I mean, like if you play it through, it's basically the rest of Act Three that I got. Holy shit! So I took it all the way up to the end. Um, so beginning of this so it's eight minutes of fighting basically <laughs> yeah <laughs> eight minutes of six people fighting well i i ended up separating them so like you know well I, I think in the script it was called out that they kind of like i think in the script man i it's been so long that i don't have an accurate description of what the script was yeah um but from my memory uh i think it was called out that they were separated or maybe not but i mean honestly you don't want four people fighting on the screen the entire time like that kind of becomes distracting and uh, there's no focus either you know uh, um oh to go back to the other question up above that was oh, that what you call asked caleb asked is um any tips on drawing lots of people fast Ooh. considering that you had to do quite a bit of drawing for this this everything this everything right. <laughs> um honestly i mean there's no like secret it's just do a lot of drawings and then it comes out faster and faster every time i think a lot of it is muscle memory uh honestly on Cora, like man i don't know how many bodies i've drawn on Cora. <laughs> just bodies bodies yeah. <laughs> only bodies uh <laughs> But no, I, you just draw a lot, man. Um, maybe as an exercise, like look up like some like, like a like a Jet Li fight or something, and like literally just use that as reference, and then draw a pose and pose from pose, like pose to pose of like what Jet Li is doing, you know, like how he, you know, like anticipates his like jump kick and then his fall through and stuff like that. And don't like rotoscope it to the point where it look yeah or don't copy it to the point that it looks rotoscoped. I think you want to find the key poses, and then you fill in between to make to make it flow a little better. So like typically with an action scene, like when I'm animating someone kicking or punching whatever, I typically like sometimes I go straight away where I go this this and then that, but then. Sometimes if I can't, if I don't know the the in between like poses, I'll I'll start with the starting pose and then I'll draw the last pose that I want him to like end it, you know, and then I'll find my way in between after. So it's like laying out the foundations of like what you want to show, and then and then you find that path leading to that end point, you know. Um, but I mean that's not always the case, you know. I feel like doing storyboards, doing art, it's all kind of a whole process. It's a whole journey too, right? So like sometimes I shoot straight away too. Like I exactly know what I want and I just go for it, you know. But I don't know. That's my tip on drawing bodies fast, I guess. Do a <laughs> but, lot of drawing. Uh, yeah, just do a lot of drawing. Uh, I guess also focus more on like the silhouette and the shape. Don't focus too much on like the anatomy of it all, like the muscles and stuff. Uh, you know, like literally just, I can draw on this, right? Yeah, and there should be a, hold on, let me switch over to the other okay. one. There you go. Yeah, you can draw on the Photoshop. 
it's just typical Photoshop um, okay. shortcuts. So like, literally, like typically, if I'm finding a pose, I'm just drawing, like not focusing too much, you know, on the the actual like anatomy of that. Like that, you worry about later. You know, you worry about a nice drawing later. You want to figure out, like, basically the shape of it first. So, I mean, even then, I'm getting a little bit too detailed here, but um, like, I sometimes even go more rough, like when I'm storyboarding, like. You know, like some of my rough boards would even look like that. Like just getting the point across and then uh, and then just, you know, finding that energy, finding that shape that you want, you know, of this guy running. Uh, so yeah, maybe focus more on that first and then and then build on top of this. Um, I'd even like as so like after this, I, you know, oh shoot, this is what I would kind of focus all the anatomy on. If you guys don't know, Eugene draws a ton, like even outside of work, he's probably the most prolific artist I know. Um, and I think that alone probably contributes to a a uh, ton of his skill and his ability to draw characters so quickly because he's always drawing and if you ever watch him draw other than he's he's giving you guys the 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 breakdown now but if you ever watch him draw on pen and paper it's not like this it's just he just draws it it just comes out it's like <laughs> it i wouldn't say it's like a printer because the printer goes back and forth like that but he just <laughs> he just hits it like the first time and it's it's quite amazing it's I don't have that ability. <laughs> and I don't I can't think of too many people that do that can just knock it out on the first try. But yeah, essentially it's you know, you 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 find your shape first, then you add on top. Like I think if you just try to sh draw like straight away like this, you kind of get lost in a, a lot of the details, you know. And I I do all the time as well. Like I sometimes get kind of caught up in making a nice drawing versus like the actual movement of a character and stuff so um, um yeah. let's go to another question how long do you quit how much of a guide did the script give you for this kind of scene uh i think the fight was or the the script specifically like the uh minghua kaya scene man i want to say it was like maybe half a page of description like <laughs> i think a lot of it was they fight <laughs> but like but i think they kind of describe like you know like the feeling of it like oh like minghua is also like a master of water bending as well and she has like these like icicle like mm. glaives whatever at, at the tip of her um her water tentacle thing that's pretty cool and then uh but kaya is also a badass too and like she's able to like redirect it or whatever like so it's like it's just enough for me to kind of get a foundation on the scene like i know that i need to get from point a to point b which point a was kai's in a pinch she looks like she's about to lose but she kind of pulls through at the end and knocks minghua out that's basically what was written in the script like the very basic part of it and i just as as, as a board artist had the job to get from that point A to point B where she knocks Minghua out. And then that's when Minghua comes back up with, I, I remember that in, in the script, she comes back up and she has like even more tentacles and it's just like, oh crap, like Kaya screwed, <laughs> you know? So, um, but I think there was, there was some extra stuff that I added to, I feel like, I don't remember what specifically, but maybe even just like, uh, I can't believe the anime of the water stuff too. Like, 
to put on <laughs> like a tone and everything. I'm like, holy shit, that's so much work. Yeah, so this I came up with on my own. Um, I think in the script, it's just like she like launches herself towards Kaya or something. But this I kind of added like a thing where she's like, she's on this like wave, you know, she like summons this wave and then she makes like a little like jousting icicle spear thing. So like, you know, there's, <laughs> uh, this drawing looks funny. Um, but yeah, um, Damn. I mean, dude, a, a lot of this I, I reference from Ryu. Like, I mean, you he, still drew it though. That's uh, a whole bunch of work. Like Ryu, man. Like I just, we Ryu and Joaquin, like and Lauren. I was always looking at their boards for reference, and uh, just seeing how they draw their effects and you know whatnot. So yeah. it looks good. Thanks, man. <laughs> Damn. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. It's all like little squares and. Yeah, but it's the details. You, you it's can, the it's you, the it's the it's that little you, you like can, it's that ten percent. You, you can do this. No, I can't. I can't do that. That's <laughs> you can crazy. Do this, Especially not now. I'm like, I'm like this. you. I'm like, no more action, man. I'm, I'm okay with. That. <laughs> like, I'm like, I. Hey man, same here. Give me, give me the talky scenes. Give me, <laughs> give me the acting stuff. I'll do that. But, um, well, I mean, sometimes I enjoy a good action scene, and I'm sure you do too. It's I mean. yeah. It's like you want those. You don't want to have to do a third act every episode, but like. Maybe like every four right, episode right. or something. Yeah, yeah. You're like, like, all right. You know, as a board, as an action board artist, you know, you you want to flex a little bit. You know? Yeah. You want to be like, hey, like I got all these all this experience under my belt. Like I want to show that off. You know, so. Um, you want to do those Nakamura up? Yes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just totally, waiting. Man. I haven't been able to do like a crazy action sequence in a while, so I'm like, oh, I have some ideas I want to like get yeah. out there, but. Yeah. But then another part of me is like, oh, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the idea of it is always great. Like, man, like, like, I think I could do a good job on that. And then, like, when it comes to it, you're, I'm just like, oh, like, when's this going to end? Like, why did I say yes to this section? This sucks. Uh. And then when you actually finish it, you're like, oh, man. That's pretty cool. <laughs> when you play it back, that moment yeah, yeah, when you, like, yeah. play it back and you're watching, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, good. Oh, I'm like, pretty good. Okay. <laughs> and you get notes on it, and they're like, "Nah, th this isn't good." Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, were there any other questions? Um, any idea how many? Oh, were the slow motion parts your idea? Uh, yes, I think so. I want to say yes. Um, because that's a you know that's a good slow motion moment where you know she just barely dodges that 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 ice glaive you know but this is also this is so it's not just that it's not just for like the aesthetics the slow-mo here is also to capture and show that kaya is water bending that ice glaive off so it functions as that too so it's also an important story like telling function uh point as well um because sometimes slow-mos are you know done really cool like you know uh what's his What's his face with Transformers? Uh, Michael Bay. Michael Bay. You know, he does all the, you know. <laughs> and it's like, cool. Yeah, it looks cool. But is there any story point to it? Like, with this, it was specifically for showing Kaya breaking off, you know, this piece of ice. So. Damn. And then she redirects it and then resume normal speed. So. I mean, this this fight was really fun to do because it's it was like a you know it's like a back and forth between two master waterbenders. So this was super awesome. And uh, coming up, I'll kind of explain like what I said earlier about like not having four people on in the same sequence, <laughs> right? um, because it's it's hard to animate and it's hard to follow and it's very distracting, you know. But so here's the moment where I kind of tie Boomy back into the fight so that it doesn't feel like they're in very separate places, you know, like establishing these kind of shots in storyboards is always super vital, like keeping track of where everyone actually is and seeing that POV, you know, that over the shoulder shot, 
you know, getting that's establishing that sense of space that they're in. And uh, this is that important moment for the sequence where um, the camera POV switches from Kaya's fight to Bumi's fight. Um, so Kaya comes in, she runs off screen, uh, screen. Minghua chases, and then we, and that's why the camera's panning up. It's following up to Bumi and Kazan. And then now the camera has fully shifted into their POV. Sick. And uh, this was really fun for me too, because Boomy is just he's he's ridiculous. He's <laughs> <laughs> he's amazing. I think in the script it was called out that he he bites Kazan. So <laughs> but him airbending like back towards him and under him, I think that was me. <laughs> so I added that. But he just needed to bite Kazan and I that's how I got him onto Gazan and biting him. And then, so here, back here again. So in the script, um, it's called out that Bumi and Minghua, or uh, uh, Kaya are back together again, like back to back. So this is that reestablishing shot again of where everyone is. So boom, and now they're together. I now see the you're having as much fun as I am. So yeah, the POV is back to them now. So, yeah. so that's kind of how I split up the fight. So you're not, you know, focusing on four characters fighting all at once. You know, so <laughs> I I love Kazan's design. Man, I wish. Yeah, he, he's really cool. He's yeah. so cool with his like lava ninja stars yeah. and. Oh. Yeah, I I definitely wish that they played a bigger role in book four as well. Like that right? would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's also the lady with like exploding eyeball stuff too. Right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, that was awesome too. I had the, the way, I mean, spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> the way she goes is like, it's, it's shocking. It's like, I remember reading the script. I was like, fool, <laughs> badass, oh, so cool. Like, but I mean, at the same time, I'm like, oh no, like she's such a cool character. But I mean, that's when you know they did a great job. Like when you don't want a character to go. So, damn. Um, more question. Let me pages uh pages i want to say like eight minnow no, maybe it was like maybe it's like nine pages or something or ten pages of just action yeah that's insane yeah. that's that's too much um unrelated question to jordan asked unrelated question to cora but do you have any perspective tips for boards i'm in kirk's class now and i'm looking to study how to apply lessons to boards i'm just going to point that out i think sketch up uh, <laughs> <laughs> In in this panel right here, uh, I think it's interesting how uh, you use the perspective grid. Like you have this is like the center of the camera, right, where it's kind of like pointing ish. Oh right, 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 right. Yeah. So I, so usually like even though there's a SketchUp background, sometimes I'll throw in the horizon line for the characters specifically. Um, I think height wise, Boomy and Kaya are like roughly the same height on the character the character chart sheet, right? And what the horizon line does is, like, you take Boomy's head on the horizon, and then you line that up to Kaya. Like, no matter where she is, like, no matter where she is on screen, like, if she's, like, all the way back here, really tiny, her forehead should be in line with his forehead as well. Like, that's, that's my greatest tip <laughs> for perspective and characters, you know, keeping them, you know, keeping their heights realistic and you know, the same you know and if kaya was shorter you know if kaya was actually below the horizon line if she was all in the back she would still be under the horizon line like surprisingly so like yeah i mean that's one of my tips for perspective um i don't know if there's anything else i mean honestly i hate drawing backgrounds <laughs> 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 um a lot of the shows that I worked on, they allow um, SketchUp models. And honestly, it's nice too, because you can really find an interesting shot with SketchUp as well. Um, but sometimes I'll, sometimes if I'm like hurting for time, I'll do like a really rough like thumbnail of like a sequence and then I'll go back and then I'll add in all the SketchUp backgrounds according to whatever like, you know, shitty thumb that I drew <laughs> and uh and then I'll put the characters on top so 
Uh, Caleb says, any big epiphanies you remember as a student where something clicked and you made a big leap? Student could also mean working professional. Lol. Hmm, big epiphanies. Uh... Man. I've, I've had a few, but honestly, I can't... I don't remember what the... <laughs> Definitely, like... Definitely the biggest times I had epiphanies is pulling all nighters, <laughs> like working super hard on like getting like hitting a, hitting a deadline, like when you're on your like a hundredth drawing, and you're tired, and you're literally relying on like your motor skills of drawing, like you somehow get into this like state where things just come out fast and like. Um, it's like when Fry drinks that 100th cup of coffee <laughs> in Futurama. It's just like, Duh! and then like, you, you just know, you just know, uh, it's, ah, uh, man, I wish I had a better answer for you, but. Um, I know what you're talking about. That yeah. happens to me too when, like, we have to pull all-nighters. I, d I distinctly remember just being like, all right, I'm just going to draw. And they would just be like, I'm like, oh, I feel like Eugene now. I'm just drawing things. <laughs> it's just coming yeah. out. And then you, you, like, go through, like, 20 panels really quickly. And you're like, oh, this is so good. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, storyboarders high, for sure. Cause you know you you gotta get warmed up by your like you know fiftieth, hundredth drawing. Like definitely like your wrists, your 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 hand. It's all it's all warmed up. Your mind is warmed up too. Like you can definitely hit those like silhouettes and shapes a lot easier and more simply. I also feel like because you're tired, it doesn't let you like noodle as much. So like you right. focus in really right. quickly on right. something. You, you you focus on the important poses and the important you know storytelling moments of like a section you know um but don't do that don't have to pull all yeah, that no, like, don't, yeah. <laughs> i would not i would try not doing that anymore if i yeah. could it's a rite of passage actually <laughs> no, I'm but, i mean uh, they have it easy now like most schedules are like five six week six weeks we have like four weeks for like 12 pages bro it's never enough time it's never, that is, it's never that is very it's true. never enough time i think four weeks five weeks six weeks i'm always rushing into that <laughs> so um i mean it's been a it's been a minute since i've pulled an all-nighter um but yeah man cora was cora was intense like, for sure um i'm trying to think on i think in for motor city i get to the bison oh my epiphany was like using perspective grids for like turning the camera and making things like go crazy. That's when I started using a lot of that and was like, oh shit, you can do this. Like mm -hmm. my whole, I was like, Pfft. yeah, man, just came out. I think that that head thing I was talking about earlier with the horizon line, like Brian actually taught me that. Really? <laughs> yeah. He was like, Eugene, this is high perspective. Like in a very simple way. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Oh man, that makes a lot of sense. And then you can apply it to anywhere. Like, if it's like a low, you know, if if it's like a low angle shot, I'm like, uh, or I guess, well, whatever. But like, oh wait, no, this is not the right example. Sorry. I mean, you could still use it if even if two people are standing on the ground playing. Yeah, but it's not just heads; it's everything. So like this knee, right? And then, like, let's just put the horizon right there. Like, technically, whatever guy that's standing here, like, his knee would be, like, oh, God, sorry. But you get the point. <laughs> and then maybe you'd be like, oh, like, his head's cut off. Then I would frame it higher. You know, like this. Yeah, I would say that's on need to know basis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it, this literally applies to everything, like like a fucking crate back here, you know. You want to draw a crate back there, bro? I got you. What's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> so, What's in the box? <laughs> you know, that's one of my tips, um, and also Brian Konietzko's tip. Thank you if you're watching somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, other questions. Uh, uh, hold on. Let me see if I can go back up. Do we miss Kirk's class? Do we answer your question about Kirk's class perspective tips? If you have any more of those, 
Uh, I think there was another what? I think we answered that. What references would you use? There's some. Uh, Posing on the side. Oh, the director thing. Okay, 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 okay. Where was that? Uh, what's the hardest thing about being a director? I think it's. I feel like the hardest thing is actually working with a team, like working with people. Because, well, for me at least, uh, I'm I'm a very quiet person, and you know, so it's 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 kind of hard for me to kind of give direction to you know, and uh, but I think just managing people and keeping everyone like on track, I think that to me is the hardest. Um, and just I think. I guess kind of kind of the pressure too, like a lot of the responsibility for that episode kind of lies on your shoulders as well. Um, that's kind of like the hardest to deal with, but I think by each episode you kind of get used to it. Um, and then in terms of like, but I will have to say, I, working as a director, I think helped me immensely as a board artist as well, um, because before as a board artist. Uh, normally you would be assigned a section of like a script you get act three act two or act one right and uh, you wouldn't have to worry about the rest of the episode after that but as a director you're focused on the entire episode you get all the boards back and then you watch the episode as an entire as it as an entirety you know and then you you watch to see if it flows okay or it flows well and uh, so as a director it helped me as a board artist realize that no, whatever section that I'm assigned relates to the section after me as well. So I need to keep that in mind while boarding, you know, so that once the director gets my section, like it should fit in well with all the rest of the sections, you know, because I, I have to say a lot of times, a lot of board artists that get stuff sectioned off to them, all they care about is their own section, which I was guilty of too uh, when I first started you know, as a yeah. board artist. And they're like, well, it's my section, and like, who cares about the rest of the sections? You know, but like, no, 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 no. Like, what you do affects the rest of the episode too. So um, I think that's always good to keep in mind. And that's what I learned as a director as well. So anytime I start reboarding stuff or boarding things in general, um, always had that in mind like okay what's the overall entire point of this episode like um lance learns to be selfless or something you know and it's okay so i gotta make sure like all those themes kind of like hit in act one and act two and then it pays off in act three you know uh, as a board artist before i would probably just be like Man, how do I do a badass action scene in this you know, Act One? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> how do I kill myself? <laughs> uh, Lance being selfless, whatever. Uh, like action, ah, you know. But like as a, I think as a seasoned board artist, like as a prof like someone who's really good, they can see that and and also call that out while doing a good action scene. This kind of piggybacks off of that question, but how do you go from like script to storyboard? I know a lot of people have different methods. Like, what is your method? Start uh, one time. <laughs> from like from like the script, from yeah. like when you get the script to like uh to like finishing your boards. Like, what's your steps? Like, oh okay okay. Um, so I'll get the script. I probably note it a little bit. See like, like while reading it, I'll probably have some ideas. Like, like oh, this needs to be an over the shoulder shot or like. Oh, a beat is missing like maybe I need, I need to add that as well then once I finish noting that I would start doing roughs and uh, honestly my process is a little bit all over the place um, sometimes I go straight away where I just like like I do kind of like rough clean like where you know it's kind of like it's like a little bit of this level of clean like probably less clean than this but i would do that kind of rough and then just go like straight away Damn. yeah sometimes i would do that but honestly don't do that i think that's a very slow way of working i'm just lazy <laughs> um <laughs> there have been times where oh actually this is one of the epiphany things 
um, I actually started doing layouts like of like just one drawing. Like, okay, I, I know what this scene is. I just need to do one layout of the drawing, then move on. And then I would actually finish the sequence, but it's not all timed out and it's not all animated, you know? So, but in your mind, you know what it is, you know? So you go back and then you fill in all those steps. It's just like what I said about, you know, animating a punch, you know, going from here, here, and here. I usually go straight away. I go here, here, and here. <laughs> but I, honestly, I, the smartest thing is to get the overall picture. Go from here to here, and then you worry about this, 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 whatever, like later. I think all that, I think the overall sense of the story is more important than just going straight away. Um, I think more recently, I just, I started doing that out of time restriction. Uh, I'm just like, man, I don't have enough time. Like, I really got to just get this out. So, okay, big points, big points, big points. All right, I got all the big points down. Let's go back in and make it look good, you know. And usually making it look good is the fastest step. Like, I can do that fast. I think the bigger thinking parts, like staging and um, shot-wise or whatever, like how yeah. scenes cut, like, that's the hardest part for me. Um, but yeah, so sometimes I'd go straight away or I would thumb out all the layouts first, go back, pitch the roughs to whoever, and then once that's done, address all the notes, clean that clean that up. The cleanup part for me is the easiest. Like I could just put something on and then just clean the shit out of it. It's super easy. Space yeah. jam it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doing roughs is always the hardest yeah. for me. And it's crazy because that's always the least amount of time. Yeah. yeah, it's always two weeks, and then three weeks to clean. Which it, it, it kind of makes sense. It makes sense, but but the the level of rough roughness that I do, it's kind of clean, so it takes me more time, I guess. So yeah. it's interesting that we both got we because I do the same thing as you do, where yeah. like I used to just go right straight ahead, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd often run into problems where I'm like, oh my god, this is a jump cut, so I'd be like, oh yeah, yeah. You'd have to like throw things out and. I started doing what you did where I just like do the first shot and then I had like, okay, it's going to end here. And so I'll do this one next yeah, and yeah. this one. And... I think that's definitely the most, because at least, at least you like, even if you're like, you're, you run out of time, you at least have a story told from start to finish, even though there's no like animation in between or like key poses, whatever. But if you go straight away and you run out of time, you're only halfway done. <laughs> like you, you, yeah, you, you get a beautifully, you know, well, like choreographed fight scene, but you didn't finish your section. So, like, I think the smartest thing to do is to get the overall done, and then usually, like, honestly, like, all the in between stuff, th that stuff is so fast. Like, that is super fast. Yeah. And you can hand it off to other people. Like, if you have all the shots there, you can just hand them off to, like, the revisionist right. or even the director or supervising director right. will take some, so. Right. Um, but don't be like that. Get your work done. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, like, you know, every, everyone works differently. Um, so do what you feel is right for you. And if it isn't working for you, maybe try the bigger picture things first and rather than going straight away you know uh, um someone had a question kylie says how do you to avoid the dreaded this character is standing in a whole perspective mistake i guess what i uh kind of that horizon thing that i mentioned right yeah that's like, what i would say so like So here's the horizon line, right? Like, say if these two characters are technically the same height. Um, let's just do that. Like, that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because if they are the same height, his head here wouldn't be at his neck. So this guy is standing in the hole. <laughs> um, so to correct that, you would try to match this horizon line to this guy's shoulder. So. How do I, is it 
Alt? Oh, uh, Control D, I think. Control D. Okay. Yeah, so I guess this would be the fix. So now he wouldn't, he technically wouldn't be standing in the hall. Um, did you have anything else to add to that? Like, uh, about the whole, the whole issue? <laughs> I think it's just like, yeah, figure out where the horizon line is and then thinking about, I think the problem a lot of times people have with characters in holes is that they, if like you're looking at a book on a table like this, uh, or you can't, let me switch over to, if you're looking at something on like a, 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 a table like this or a flat ground, there's like a certain perspective of the corners of the book you have to match. But a lot of times people will draw it like this, like they'll draw it off kilter, right? Like they, um, they don't have the edges of the, the book or whatever. Like it's not placed flatly on the actual ground. It's actually drawn like tilted as if like it's on its corner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah or maybe like one side will be on the ground but then the top will be like slanted down or something so it looks right. a little funky right so you're saying like i'm just saying make sure your your if if you can think of everything as a box make sure your boxes edges go to that horizon line that you have set up like people would draw like that or something yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what i'm thinking of yeah so yeah th that's wrong like that's going to a different <laughs> horizon <line. laughs> like you want to do this like you want to match it match that shit up match it out <laughs> so okay, sorry. it's all good you're a popular map everyone wants you on stream no. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh they can't see the stream oh, oh shit sorry um i'll go back sorry about that Whoop. there you go so here i can control z this i think you might have to like control shift Z because it's, oh, okay. it's the the Photoshop stuff where it's. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it's on that. Oh. No. Huh. Is it this? Ah, there you go. So, yeah. I think this is what Dio was talking about. Like, you know, because since the top of the box is above the horizon line, we wouldn't be able to see the top of this box. Um. I mean, this is a very exaggerated version, you know. Um, and then that's the fix. Like, you gotta match it. You gotta match it to the actual vanishing point. I mean, that's very basic. But. If you think about the box as like the top of someone's shoulders, that's that's what happens a lot of times. I think people don't understand how shoulders look, so like they'll draw it so that you can either, like mm, it's too much. Like, right, it right. would look like someone's like leaning down like that, but when right, actually right, it should right, be a lot right, flatter. Right. So. Right. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, I feel like I have that problem too. You know? I think everyone yeah. has that. Like, I have that problem. Even now, it still comes up. Like, you just draw something quickly, and you're right. like, "Oh, it looks okay," and then you. So, like, technically, oh, like since below the neck is below the horizon line, like, like this would kind of like, kind of go down a little bit more. So you know, and then the head is above. So. But I think with people, it's a little bit more lenient. Yeah. With a box, you can definitely see it. Um, yeah. It's very subtle stuff. I feel like a lot of the differences between like a good drawing and a great drawing is like ten percent. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. all in that like. Yeah, it's all in that that perspective too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kylie says. Right, like for example, you'd have to shift the horizon line to make sure they both match height, but also not be cut off by the frame, but also still be the camera angle. <laughs> yep, that's storyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's all uh, all the storyboarding. That's that's fun. That's why I, we talked about. I think I know between you and I, we always talk about this, but like storyboarding is like one of the harder professions, just because. You have to know technical drawing, you have to know cinematography, and you have to know like storytelling. Right. And you know that to you have to know how to animate too as well. But like or somewhat know how to animate. Like pose out a character. Yeah. And also like human behavior, like acting stuff and like just Right. It's it's so many skills mashed into one that you need that to do it well you have to kind of like you have to love it. Right. And it's it's interesting because I feel like in Japan, like the animators are almost like storyboard artists as well, or at least like our version of a storyboard artist. 
the storyboards for them is literally storyboards. Yeah. Yeah. But like what we do is more kind of like I guess production boards, right? So um in animators in Japan, like they literally get a storyboard from the director who boarded the entire thing and then they are adding all the key poses and everything, which is kinda like what we do, but they take it to an actual finish versus like us. We're just taking an entire like half an act or whatever or like entire act and kind of roughly key animating all that out yeah so it's crazy thinking about like how we were talking about generator rex was on like paper because i don't remember ever doing this many poses on rex like where you're like rex was on paper that was on photoshop right oh no before you came on yeah yeah, like when we were doing you're on ben 10 but then i was on rex doing on paper and i was like i don't think i ever did nearly as many poses as we have now because like we all we'll have like scenes where there's like 20 panels but right right I don't remember like doing twenty panels. No, yeah, because like with Toon Boom now, Toon Boom you could basically animate on it. So and it's it kind of works like it too, where you can kind of toggle back and forth between like the frames and stuff. Yeah. It's intense. Uh, Kylie says, "I'm glad you said so- that's something you struggle with even later on. It feels bad to keep messing it up, even if you're on the lookout for it." Min May says, "Do you have any tips for character acting?" Character acting. Uh... I guess all the character acting I do is more kind of anime based. Um, I don't know if it, it would help you in like a Western kind of cartoon kind of story telling. Uh, <laughs> That's why I say yeah. I'm like, it's there are two different worlds. There's like, yeah, because there's like the Disney style. Right. And then there's like the anime style. And then there's like Cartoon Network style. Yeah. And there's because on. So like, for example, on Voltron and Korra, even um, we were basically like restricted a lot of the time is from characters doing too many of like like the teapot like movement like like i can't believe you didn't tell me this like why didn't you and it's like, all this <laughs> and like like it it could look good you know if if handled correctly but most times like nine out of ten times that's going to be delivered to korea and animators in korea have no idea what you're doing like what is this character doing? And then when the final animation comes back, they're just doing this weird thing. It just doesn't look right. Like in your boards, it might have been timed correctly yeah. because there's only this pose and then that pose. But in Korea, it's just like, <laughs> it's like, no, it needs like a, you know, this thing or something. But they don't know that. And it's like for Voltron and Korra, a lot of times we avoided that for acting. A lot of times we kind of settled with more facial, like small, like, you know, uh, nuanced acting. Oh, yeah, switch it over. Oh, oh I, got, I got you. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that I was laughing because I did the exact same thing a couple of episodes ago where I was like, there's a lot of this going on. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, literally yeah, yeah. the same motion. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's funny. Which, which, is, I, which is fine, you know. I think, you know, for Korra specifically, I don't know, for Voltron specifically, you know, there's certain characters that can break that rule of doing that and that and that and that which is Lance because he's a comedic character and like he was kind of able to do more of the goofy silly like overacting kind of motions and it worked but for most times when you know Shiro or Keith is kind of explaining like a mission or whatever they're not gonna always do uh, 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 like oh we gotta go to this thing and it's just usually we find a good angle good camera like uh, shot good staging very interesting staging good pose one drawing talk no like no hand gestures whatsoever um but that's more for like you know straight away talking stuff for lance yeah there's a little bit more of like that i feel like that i looked at at a lot of like you know studio trigger stuff which was like always kind of fun and there's like a lot of life a lot of like you know very cartoony too yeah you know um some of their acting is fun, um, you know, super anime, super, uh, super funny. Um, I was gonna actually show you guys maybe an example of acting that I do for Voltron. Oh, sorry, there's like a big. <laughs> this was the only way I could cut stuff was with a free program, so it has this giant watermark over it. So, bear with me. Oh no, where'd it go?
<laughs> I'm trying to shrink it. Oh. Um, but it's not grabbing the corners. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah, this is not sponsored. I was not sponsored by Movavi. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from Voltron. Uh, I think I forgot which episode number this was, but uh, huh? they somehow like wandered onto a Gara ship, and uh, it's been like everyone's missing, and there's like a there's like a monster in it, and it's kind of like a horror episode, but. just watch yeah just, just very that too yeah just very like very limited acting you know uh it, it honestly doesn't need that many poses um if you find a good shot and you do a good drawing like honestly you can get away with a lot like you see that they're they're not doing any <laughs> you know extra <laughs> hand thing or whatever like it's just it's all in the facial expression you know blink blink and then <laughs> oh my god did you animate that yeah <laughs> oh my goodness oh yeah you opened the last one quick time that's why yeah This is so big. <laughs> How do you? Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. Tonk, do you copy? Ah, ha yes, just... Oh, you animated the background. Holy shit. I mean, there's like moments where you can kind of just like really go ham on some of the acting and stuff you know but typically when when there's kind of like you know this kind of talky stuff like i'm not going to have pitch be like like lance hunk you know like <laughs> or you know it just Guys, are you okay? like one good pose hunk? and then just notice the face like it's mo it's mainly the face that's kind of doing all the acting but sometimes you know there it, there might be a story point that requires some kind of gesture or whatnot so it's not it's not a like a steadfast rule of like you can't move the arms or whatever you know uh, you have to really feel the scene and like what it exactly needs um but i have to say like maybe seven out of ten times of most kind of talky scenes like you don't need all this like Unless that's the direction of the show. If that's what they asked for, then yeah, do it. But for Voltron specifically, like we definitely avoided all that stuff. That's what I feel. Um, Black White Zero One says, "Any thoughts on storyboard artists evolving roles and added expectations <coughs> like timing, layout, camera moves, and more animating in their boards?" Roles and added expectations. Oh, like doing more than what they're asked for. I guess so, yeah. Um, that's tough. Like, so for me, like, two shows back to back that I worked on, Voltron and Korra, that was like, I think five years of my life so far. Um, yeah. I've I've had to time it out. I've had to add extra poses. I had to do all the camera movements. Like, um, and honestly, I like doing it. Um, it adds more of a final finish to like what it should look like you know what an actual like animated episode would look like it gets it closer to the final product if it's super rough and like it works as like a rough drawing like you know sure like it works as like a rough storyboard but you're not selling that idea though completely you know um so personally i like to kind of like do it this way which was which is like kind of controlling like the extra like key poses all the camera movements to me it sells the episode better like i honestly don't have to pitch you this like the, these boards they play on their own like they like i don't need to you know press forward <laughs> or like mm -hmm. uh add any extra acting because it's, it's all part of what's like shown 
I think, yeah, I think it depends on the show you're working on for sure, like how much you're expected to do. And I also think a lot of people get into trouble on shows because maybe they didn't realize how much work it would be or maybe they, they're getting underpaid for the work. Right. So that's right. when people complain about it. But you should always ask going into a job. Right, right. That's... Like, be like, hey, how much do you expect of us? Do you have any examples of the work? Like, is... And you can show wor- your own work and be like, hey, is this how much you want or is this how little you want? Like... Right. Um. Yeah. Honestly, like, I've been doing it this way for so long that, like, I... I just like it this way. <laughs> um, I feel like if I see anything less, it just like it's not that it doesn't cut it for me. It's just like it's not as close to what it could be like in, as a final product. And it also helps like this also helps overseas too. like posing it out this much and doing this level of drawing. Because if you give them a rough drawing, like that's more work for them to have to figure out. Because one, that perspective is probably wrong if it's rough. Two, the character's off model. They can't just like trace over it, which would help them a lot, you know. Because animators overseas are like, like you thought we're overworked doing this stuff. Animators overseas are way more overworked. Like, um, they actually have to make it move, <laughs> yeah. and it has to be on model, and like, and they're some of them are still doing it on paper too, man. Like, it's crazy. So. Like, if, if there's any way a board artist can help the animators overseas, I think that's what you should strive for, I feel like. At least in this profession. Um, I can say this is the case for, I guess, feature boards or, you know, any other show that isn't, you know, outsourced overseas to be animated. But if it is outsourced, I think it's always best to try to draw on model and be as specific as possible with your ideas yeah i agree i think it's i think for action especially it's like the better you lay out your stuff the happier everyone will be (laughs) right for sure um did you have anything you wanted to talk about we're at like 9 20 we have like 40 minutes you can talk about anything that you want or if you guys have more questions that we haven't covered yet or anything you're curious about Eugene, like why he draws chickens all the time or, or, <laughs> or anything unrelated to um, storyboarding like Bloodborne or Dark Souls, which <laughs> he loves a lot. Well, well, <laughs> Justin E has a question. Justin E says, where do you get your inspiration for fight choreography? Man, it's I feel like it's all anime. Um, <laughs> it's all like... It man, <laughs> it, it man. No, actually, you know, I I watch. I remember. Sometimes I'll be boarding an action scene, and like sometimes there, it's it's uh, the inspiration doesn't come from anime. It comes from like Hong Kong, like kung fu movies or action movies. Yeah. Like like it man, Donnie Yen, or like Flashpoint, Donnie Yen. Oh, like Flashpoint! That, yeah, that fight scene's awesome. Like, like anything, you know, anything with action that's choreographed super well. I think definitely helps. Oh yeah, John Wick has some. Oh yeah, yeah, John, John Wick. Is good. Yeah. And then, um, well, I mean, anime wise though, like we talked about for like sword fights, definitely uh, Sword of the Stranger is up there. Um, I'm always watching Cowboy Bebop too. I mean, you guys, yeah, I, mean, I know he says it a lot, <laughs> but <laughs> yo, Cowboy Bebop is like. Good compositions, good storytelling, good like good everything, man. Like you can't go wrong with it. Like even if you hate the story, like look at it for the art, like and just like the animation of it all. And I didn't even tell him to say that. He that was him alone. This is not sponsored by Cowboy Bebop or anything. You can give me fifty bucks. <laughs> <that's okay. laughs> um, um, do you, Kenny says, do you stretch every hour? What stuff do you do to keep your longevity of drawing? uh yeah i try to stretch usually you know usually sometimes i'll like draw on the side like i'll kind of doodle on the side that kind of helps me like de-stress myself from like a deadline or yeah i take a walk um 
you would grab some boba tea or whatever mm. with some friends and, or with some coworkers. Um, that gave us an excuse to get up and walk around. Uh, I think you are kind of like uh, a part of that. Do you ever get pain in the ball of your wrist or like do you any, do do you do any physical like therapy to prevent any wrist or back pain um, or anything like that? Actually, surprisingly enough, maybe it's the way I draw. I've never had wrist problems before, so. Um, I, yeah, sorry, I can't answer that question. <laughs> but like, um, I mean, the way I work though, I don't have my elbow like hanging. It's always kind of just on the Cintiq. So, but the way I draw is weird too. Like I hold my pencil weird. So I don't know if that's also why, like I haven't had any like wrist problems. Do you actually draw it with this flat? I just moved it down so that the camera would be here, but. Well, no, like, well, like usually, yeah, my screen's like here and like, I mean, it's it, it'd be hanging, but like it'd be you know kind of like this. Oh, so it is pretty flat. Yeah. Wow. And then I just I I mean the way I draw is, is mostly like this. Oh yeah. Like I make all my shapes like this. Like I'm not moving around too much. Um. But I mean, like, look, the way I hold my pencil is really weird. So, <laughs> like. That's interesting. I used to draw like that too, where you have it on the fourth finger, right? Where you hold it on the. Yeah. Yeah. It's doesn't look right i mean everyone draws <laughs> there are people that hold it on their pinky where they hold it like that do you have you seen that before the pinky fish yeah kind of like that and then there's are the like they'll do it where it's it's like this all on all their fingers are like on one side like that it's like held like Whoa. that and they, they draw like that yeah i mean like whatever works for you right in the end yeah um i will say that i can't get like really broad like curved strokes just doing this like you have to like it's too like tight. Like I think this is like a nice like, you know. I don't know. But. I feel like so I've been watching a lot of people draw because I'm like, what makes them a good art? And this is something I, I realized is like, if you can get like a good stroke consistently, you can your drawings will look great no matter what that stroke looks like as long as you know that one stroke. Because watching you draw, watching like Alex Chu draw, watching like other artists are very good at just like putting it down they have like this one stroke or like a couple strokes that are really smooth every time i'm like oh uh, because i think what i do is i don't draw as much with my wrist as i should like i use i think i use a lot of my my fingers so i think there's oh, an inconsistency in it interesting but when i do it like your style i'm like oh it feels a lot better I'm like, mm. oh, maybe i should do that yeah i don't ever draw with my fingers it's all oh wait no i do hold on <laughs> i gotta test this out uh, switch back to the other one, so they can they can see you in action. And how do I? Well, yeah, I guess I am moving my fingers, but it's not. You're like, you're actually like, like how do you draw? I think I do a lot more like, like it's not. I don't move my wrist as much as I should. And uh, I think that's why my drawings are typically a lot smaller because I'll usually just do it like that, oh. or something. and then. But I don't think that's good. Like I don't think that's a good technique. Like how do I? How do I... Oh yeah, so I I do move my wrist for these bigger strokes at least. Um, but if I'm drawing like a face, like I'm gonna do it, do an anime face. How, how am I drawing? Yeah, I guess I'm. I guess I'm drawing with my fingers too a lot of times. But I guess since I'm holding it like with like three fingers, maybe it's like <laughs> it's not as it doesn't put as much stress onto my hand. I mean, do you have problems with like pain or anything? No, I try to be pretty mindful of that. Like as soon as something hurts, that's why I switched to three finger. I used to draw like you. Mm -hmm. And then my ring finger would get sore. So I was like, okay, I need to find a different way to draw. So I moved it to my middle finger and I taught myself how to draw again. Mm -hmm. And then like, I would get like wrist pain. So I learned and back, I'd get back pain. So now I just draw leaning back. Like everyone jokes that I oh, yeah. draw like this, but I literally just draw like this all day. Like leaning Dude, way good. back. I, I still have, I have back problems all the time. I, I have back problems. That's what it is. Not wrist problems. Um, I hunch a lot. So. I think my thing I have to watch out for is not like eye problems. I've I've been using my phone a lot more. Oh yeah, me too. And I'm just like, oh no, I need to like stand up. Yeah, my eyes are getting worse. 
Um, for artists aiming to work on action adventure shows, what would you recommend for portfolio content? I've been told a few times that the art style similar to Core of Voltron are too limited. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think so. For artists, what would you? What do you want to put? What do you think you should put on a portfolio con portfolio uh, for action adventure shows? Um, I don't think it's the style that matters. It's more of um, it's more the action, right? It's more of like how you tell a story. I feel like um, portfolio content. I feel like we want to see we want to see action, obviously, but we but we also want to see like if you can handle like acting or a comedy. I think showing a good skill of staging is super important. And just knowing how to draw like anatomy correct, you know, like proportionally correct and whatnot. Uh, Cause that goes a long way. Like if you could do that correctly, like you can break the figure as much as you want. Like, um, and you should be able to fit onto almost any show. Um, if you have mastered anatomy and like proportion and stuff, um, cause that, that works for Voltron, that works for the Spider-Man TV series, that works for like anything. So, um, yeah, that yeah. makes me feel good. Yeah. I've been saying the same thing. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's true. Cause, cause it's it, sure. Like maybe a studio will be like, oh man, what's this like Voltron, like Korra anime bullshit, like we don't do that here at like Marvel or whatever. I don't know. Um, I I honestly don't think they say that. I think they, I don't think yeah. They say I that think anymore. they care more about like what um, like what your boards actually are, like how you tell the story, how you're cutting, how you're staging, like what kind of acting you're doing, like you know. All the same people that are working on those superhero shows now are all people that grew up on anime. Like, I can't think of anyone in yeah. action adventure storyboarding that doesn't have some anime influence in their work now. And so, if if your drawings look like Korra, but they're good drawings, like, well-proportioned, or right. even right. in the, like, pretty close to the Korra style, they'll be like, oh, this is good, and we can use you. Right. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, they're hiring you for your boarding skills, not the style you're drawing. Uh, yes, it's true that Korra and Voltron are very specific cases of Western anime. Um, I just happen to work on it, and that's part of my portfolio now. And I show that all the time to people asking for my work. So, and they're usually fine with it. Like, so, how much do you put in your portfolio? Like you, you would just put Adam Max in yours, right? You don't put like full storyboards or Yeah, usually it's uh I think usually I get asked for so like the last time I was asked it was like oh include like a like you know, thirty seconds or like a minute of like action, acting, comedy. Oh damn. Yeah. So like maybe thirty to thirty seconds to like a minute of each of those would be good to get a sense of like where your level is. I should cut my boards into it, automatics. So much work though. Yeah, because, like, yeah, I, I could look at PDFs, but it's just so much easier to watch an anime. <laughs> oh yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's all timed out. It's all like it's all there, you know. Um, but like I said, that's that's how I work. Um, I always time my stuff out, so. I, I I'm I'm happy to hear you say those things because I feel the same way and I've been saying that for the last couple of weeks. Like, yeah, it's it's your technical skills that will get you your first foot into the door, and then storyboarding or your your story and acting stuff will come later as time progresses. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think I was very good at telling the story at the start, but they don't really. There are people who help guide you, and that takes more time. Right. And, like once you learn how to breathe drawing bodies <laughs> <laughs> only bodies <laughs> yeah. once you learn how to do that like like once you can do it like as if you're breathing i think that's when you can focus more on staging and storytelling and all that stuff because drawing bodies and stuff whatever that's that's just a tool for storytelling so 
and but it's an important tool for board artists like to draw a convincing figure yeah so um okay agent penguin 007 <laughs> says what i hold the pen like that too oh bro oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I, th- I feel like that's like Will New, but I don't think it is. Um, oh, is it? No, I don't think so. The other, William Duguash says, so three quality projects would be enough examples to get a test. Um, well, if they're asking... Okay, so the thing about storyboard testing is very different now. If you have three good stuff like him, they're not going to ask you to test usually. They'll just be like, well, here's a job. <laughs> but mm. if, they're, if the tests are more for people who don't have work to show, I feel... Or at least that's what I'd hope it is for. If someone's asking you to test and you have like a good amount of work, see if you can like not have to test because that's you just doing more storyboards for free, right? Mm. I can't. Yeah, have you ever tested for a show other than Cora? Because I know you took the to- Cora test. Right, and... right, right, right. Do we? Do we take a test for Randy? No. I don't. I don't think I did. Actually, yeah, I think I've only done the Cora test. Yeah. That was the only test I've done. I think that... I, I did half of that test, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was crazy that... They... Uh, it, yeah, it was like, what, like a week, and you had to do an acting scene and an action scene. And it was the action like, scene was hard. Yeah, it was a motorcycle one with yeah, bending yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... <sighs> oh, man, I wonder if I could find that test that I did. It's somewhere. I, I have it somewhere. Oh, man, it's not good. <laughs> So not good. I remember looking at mine and I was like, oh, I'm so bad. Like, this was a couple of years back. But even that, I was like, oh, I'm so bad. And then the acting one, I had started and I was like, I can't draw a polar bear. I'm okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I stopped it. I stopped doing it. I was just like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, do, do you guys, to get back to like testing, I think, um, if you can show that you can draw well, that's important. And then if you can show you have range, then that's like second important. Yeah. I, I will say drawing ability is probably what's going to catch their eyes first. And then second is going to be, they're going to look at your boards and see if you can actually tell a story. I mean, that's definitely the most important, but it's like, actually, yeah, sadly, it's like, it's the art that kind of catches them first too. Like your drawing ability. Yeah. 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 So work on that body. Go talk to Kirk Swolmoto about <laughs> anatomy. Uh, it, another fun fact, if you didn't know about Eugene, he's very, very good at doing caricatures of people. Like super, super good. And we have this, we have Kirk, our good buddy Kirk, who uh, he should be here. I think he's, he might be upstairs teaching, but Eugene pioneered i would say pioneered the kirk drawing like he has got it down to a science him and arthur i think you do a good arthur too oh man you haven't drawn arthur since he got his new haircut oh no i don't think i have but i mean kirk's so easy to draw you just draw a mustache and, <laughs> and you're set from this distance looking at it on the monitor i feel like kirk would make a good wario <laughs> <laughs> and then Kirk's got a really nice set of hair. He does. Dude, he's drawing pencil at the bottom. Do you like yeah. I created my own tool oh, presets shit. that I was just like, oh, I'll make myself. Yeah, give this to me. This is <laughs> nice. Hmm. That was the other thing I realized. A lot of people that post on Instagram have like really nice brushes but they don't draw very well so it's like really well finished mm, drawing right 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 I'm like, uh. and <laughs> like, it upsets me because i'm like your drawing is bad but your finish is good and oh like, i see so i'm like oh let me try my hand at doing like some fancy like yeah fluffy drawings i'm like oh it looks good and i'm like damn it <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't want to do it this way uh am says hello do you win eugene what's a good number of panels to start for making a short sequence Ooh. number of panels um uh, i'll give you a time duration like a minute's good right a minute um number of panels that depends on what it is um if it's an action scene it's gonna be a lot of panels <laughs> <laughs> um but a minute i want to say like 
of like talking it was like a good 15 shots maybe right i'm more like if it tells a story then however many it takes right no yeah yes my, yes yeah. yeah that makes sense that makes sense because i i think they it's weird when you get a storyboard that's like half finished or like half a story because then you're like i don't know how i feel about it. it's like having half a meal mm, like they give right, you like yeah. maybe a patty and like one bun and you're just like well i guess from this it's okay but i really wish i had the whole patty and like right, the, right. two buns <laughs> that's true um uh, kevin says is it cool to add a beat board sequence to my website like 25 to 30 panels i don't see why not yeah sure yeah. Yeah. as long as it tells a story like that's that's all that ma yeah. matters, I guess. Mm -hmm. Good storytelling. I mean, I feel like I've said it a couple of times, but good storytelling, good like composition, just good drawing. Like, I don't think it matters what you put up at the end if it's all that, like beat board or storyboard. Like, I think people will hire you. So, yeah. Do them good drawings. Use like the fancy brush. It no. <laughs> Caleb says hardest thing for you to learn took you the longest to learn in storyboarding. I think making characters look natural, like, and not super stiff. I think that's always been one of my challenges. I mean, I feel like I still draw kind of stiff too. Um, I feel like that was definitely the hardest for me. Also, perspective, too. I mean, perspective is hard for everybody. Um, I feel like your drawings are pretty natural. I think yours are super natural compared to most people. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, don't, I, I feel like it could still... There's still room for improvement. So You know whose stuff looks really like... like it has that extra touch of like magic is Winton's. Have you seen Winton's oh, recent yeah. drawings? I'm just yeah. like... Yeah. It, it like makes me happy. His drawings remind me of uh, Chris Palmer's a little bit. Yeah. Chris is another good example. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, yeah. Very natural. There's like something... I, I've tried copying both of them just to like see what the magic mm. is. I'm like, what is it? There's something mm. like in there. Chris is another person that I've watched draw where he... If you look at Chris's drawings, he has like this nice curve and you'll you'll find that curve in like all his work yeah, where yeah. like the the shoulder will be the same curve and then the bicep will be like a similar curve mm. but just like maybe in the opposite direction the forearm will be a smaller one but then a lot like a straight line yeah. so it's like he has a nice like shape line which i'm like oh look at those lines right there <laughs> him and winton both yeah, of them they, they both draw super super good winton could animate like a mopo too so yeah <laughs> winton, man oh yeah, Winton's good. Um, do you guys have any tips on creating short original content for samples? Sometimes I tend to get into the weeds and overcomplicate things, I think. Tips on creating short originals. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't do much of that, to be honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess that's like more story side, right? Like if you're going, my, my feeling is if you're going to make something animated, you better have your story down like solid first. Because mm. you don't want to start drawing a story and then figure out that your story sucks and then you have to scrap all those drawings. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Even if it's just something simple too, like just to showcase your ability to draw and like, film you know like even if it's just like like something like indiana jones or something right like a guy getting the idol or whatever mm. and then you animate this cool sequence or not animate sorry you storyboard a sequence that's really cool like you play the tension of you play the all that drama all that stuff like if that's all there like sure it doesn't matter what story you tell i think it's just whatever that showcases your abilities for people to want to hire you, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any tips <laughs> on creating any like original stuff. But um, if I mean, if that's what you want to do to show as like a portfolio for someone, like by all means, do it. Um, 
just make sure it looks good and it and it plays really good so this was a tip that i received from sean galloway maybe i i don't i heard it at some time when i was starting up when you make a portfolio you have like five things in it right and you put your best thing first and you put your second best thing after that and then maybe like your third best thing last right mm. but then you if you're still trying to get a job you want to keep improving on your work so whatever your weakest one is go back and fix that and then put that in there somewhere and figure out where it is and then look for the next weakest thing and they you replace that with a better drawing and then you replace that so eventually you're just trying to create better and better drawings in your portfolio i feel like for storyboards that might be a little bit harder just because it'll take more time to generate but definitely make sure your best thing is first and mm. try to get at least basic or okay work in there and try to redraw all the bad stuff if possible kevin says yeah i really i really like beat boards just not sure if it was worth it to put on a site when i already have a next five sections and the regular sequences oh like mm. like you have like regular storyboards i mean i guess at the end of the day i'd rather see a storyboard versus like beat boards if it's for a storyboard job um because beat boards are beat boards are beat boards yeah if you want a storyboard job you probably want to put your storyboards up rather than your beat boards um Jordan says Winton's ridiculous. Raven says one tidbit I heard what I heard was simple story, complex characters. Uh, Eldrick Scribe says Chad, I would talk with other creatives who are not afraid to give you honest opinions about your story. Getting another opinion can help you figure out issues before you start drawing. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Minmay says, is it preferred to use existing characters instead of original characters since people would know the existing characters are so. For like a storyboard sample? Yeah, for like a storyboard sample. Uh, uh, for me, that doesn't matter. Like, it could be your own like original character, and if it's good, it's good. You know, um, I I I know there's been like uh, storyboard exercises where they'll like get a script and then, but then they'll use like a different character for like that script, right? Like. Yeah, like it's like a Seinfeld bit, but you have to put in like. Like Ben Ten or something. Yeah. 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 Like uh, that's fun. Like I don't mind seeing that stuff. Um, it shows you're flexible and uh, you can adapt and stuff. But uh, for me, it's as long as it's good. Like that's all that matters to me. So good is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, William said, "WB recruiters told me they didn't care where your story came from. You are fine to work from scripts." Sung Shin, oh man, Sung oh. Shin in the chat. Sneak in. Uh, he says, what is good? What is good? Do you mean like, what's up or what is good? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know Sung Shin, if this is the same Sung Shin we know, he's another great board artist. Um, he He's currently killing it at, uh, maybe I don't know, I can't say, but he's, he's another great board artist. He worked on Voltron. He worked at WB. He's yeah killing it killing killing it. uh kylie gay or i guess yeah what is good what is your definition of good i'm very curious about this too oh me yeah i'm, I'm thinking well oh, let me I'll, you can finish replying I'll, I'll think about what i would consider good i think for storyboards like semi-decent anatomy good perspective good layout or like good compositions mm -hmm. um Look at, I mean, yeah. Look at look at Winton's Instagram. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, his stuff's good. So like, I, he 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 just posted his like, what was it like his first storyboard thing with Spider Man. Look great. Like, I'm like if that's your first one, you're a cheater. You're a <laughs> damn cheater. <laughs> no one's first board looks that good. Like it it has all of it. There's good staging. There's good acting. There's good action. Just super, super solid, good storyboards. Yeah, or Eugene stuff. I know it's kind of hard to find this stuff online, but it's <laughs> out there somewhere. Yeah, I, I kind of wish I posted more of my storyboards online, but um, for me, I don't know how that works with like NDA and 
with it. So I try not to risk it. <laughs> I'm um, the same. Yeah. Um, but I've been thinking about maybe doing some small kind of like animations and like kind of like animatic sequences. You post. should. Yeah. Just for fun. But one day. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about doing that too. I was like, oh man, I had an itch to like animate a little bit because I've been yeah. watching a lot of... Uh, my hero i'm like man i want to do what tanaka nakamura does i i want oh, yeah. impact frames like some cool like yeah, yeah, acting. Yeah. i'm just like and then i started doing it i'm like i'm tired <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm tired yeah this takes too long um yeah winton rendon yeah he's we, really good i think he's pretty he's i mean he's not super new right and he's like been around for maybe three or four years now maybe I think so. He was in that crop of artists that came in with Spider Man. Like it was him, Grace Lou, oh, Grace Lou Alex yeah. Chu. Grace Lou is super good too. Um, there are there are a ton of people that they're all solid. They can draw, they can mm -hmm. animate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're way at least for me they're way better when they started than when I started. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Uh, Alderic Scribe says, Tomorrow I'm pitching a storyboard I worked on to my class. Do you have any advice for pitching? Oh, man. Oh. Pitching is not my forte. So. Oh, really? No, I, like, I'm bad with pitching. But you're so good at voices. <laughs> well, no, well, okay. So, like, most of the boards that I've, like, or most of the shows that I worked on, like, I actually never needed to pitch, like, because of Toon Boom and stuff. Mm. You just press play and, like, it just plays it for you. Um, you might have better tips on pitching because I feel like you've you've done it before. Yeah, I've had to do it quite a lot actually, which is I guess. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Um, my my big one is don't explain what is happening. So if your drawing is hard to understand, that's that's, good. that's your fault. <laughs> so make it easy to understand, but don't explain. It. Don't be like, okay, and then there's two guys here and they're talking, and then Eugene says. Oh, uh, was you? You pitched more, and then David said, "Don't do that. Don't, because that just slows it down. You want to sell like the the flow of it, right? So if it's if there's just like two heads here, just be like, yeah. And then Eugene says this, and then David's like, ha, ha, ha. and then David says this, and then Eugene's like, ha, ha. and you, you tap through it like you would watch it, right? Mm -hmm. And if someone doesn't get it, they'll stop you, or they'll come back to it later on. But you want to have like that flow, right? I guess, I guess it's basically playing an animatic in the end, but you're you're playing it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, like, so you want to memorize all those beats and those dialogues are important to memorize as well um, i'm so bad at memorizing that's why i love just playing the animatic man like i do it all on the the program the timing and all that stuff so i don't have to press the arrow and memorize the lines <laughs> um but i mean yeah the other thing is you can sell a lot in pitching if you bring your energy up. And then the other, like, kind of hidden tip is when other people are pitching, laugh harder at their stuff so that they don't get as many notes. So, like, if Eugene's pitching me something and it's funny, I laugh twice as hard. Because <laughs> then if you're laughing, everyone in the other room is going to start laughing and then you won't get as many notes. Like, people are like, oh, that's pretty funny. And then they'll do it for your stuff. So when maybe the joke is not hitting perfectly... You get that extra boost of laughs. <laughs> it's pretty smart. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. And then this is an unprofessional tip, but drink a little bit. <laughs> I drink a little bit. <laughs> Going into it. <laughs> That's true. Take that edge off a little bit. Um, um, oh, thank you, Min Mace. That's really nice. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you ever going to do your own because i know you talked about making your own comic at some point yeah i think i want to do something with those characters um i don't know what yet uh but i'm 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 actually in the process of working on something like just for fun like nothing serious but it might become something serious so mm. we'll see yeah you guys are still in the early stages of relationship yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it we might become boyfriend girlfriend <laughs> with this story so um, we're, we're still like you know we're still feeling things out in the first act yeah like i i don't know if she wants a serious relationship yet so like i'm trying to figure her out so you know. i'm not big on the drama you know but yeah um raven says favorite drink oh whiskey oh yeah whiskey 
been kind of into tequila lately, actually. Really? Yeah. Mm. I bought this brand called Casamigos. I'll bring it next time. Oh it's, shit! It's the George Clooney brand. He he really? has his own yeah he has his own line of tequila. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Have you tried the Breaking Bad? The Te- tequila? Yeah, Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston have their own tequila. Oh, what? Maybe oh. I'll buy that because I've been interested in trying that out too. Yeah. Mm. What do you do on Halloween? I have no plans. You want to come? I'm thinking about streaming on Halloween. That's, <laughs> on, that's on a Thursday, and then so it'll be in place of the Friday stream. Yeah, I'm down. Sick. You can be, you can be the monopoly. monopoly man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Kaylee says fa- bananas. Bananas have calming properties, so obviously drink a banana smoothie. <laughs> Wait, wait, sorry. Banana. Oh, oh, that's smart. Um, Kylie says you could have where you put on another persona. I pretend I'm confident. Just forget about being embarrassed and think about selling your boards and the passion of the scene. That sounds like a good tip to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do. I just put on. There's like professional David, and then there's at home David, and mm. so there's like when I. If you think about pitching as your job and being extra as your job, then you don't feel that embarrassment because they're paying you to be extra. That's the way I see it. Like, if they want me to pitch, I'll give them the pitch. I'll give them the, the razzle-dazzle and stuff. <laughs> but then at home, I'm just like, uh. <laughs> I just like, you just have to learn how to turn it on. Um, Kenny says, not milk. That's not your favorite drink. Milk? Yeah, you know, not really milk. Not a milk person. I'm not a big milk person either. But ice cream I like. Same. It's <laughs> solid milk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> solid cold milk. Um, Kevin says, "Was your light box table fun? You were at light box? No. Maybe um, he's and, asking someone else in the chat. Ah. Uh, uh, William says, "Maybe, maybe a banana daiquiri. Best of both worlds. Exactly. Uh, Kylie says, "Jazz hands it out and go for it. Yeah." I think when you what okay what what is your idea on uh like professionalism in the office because I think oh there's like a lot of instances where people coming into the industry are still kind of like I don't think they think of themselves as professionals but they think of themselves as students and like would you have any advice for someone getting their first job and acting a certain way Mm. Mm. that's interesting I I think for me, well, I was going to say be professional, but what is professional? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, man. I think, well, if it's your first job, definitely don't. I think, so as a board artist, it's your job to it's your job to like um basically be the arms for your director like your director is handling the direction of the episode what he wants or he or she wants and uh as a board artist like it's fair to argue like a point across like you know give your two cents on like what you think the scene should be because that's also, you know, what your job is too, to kind of bring your take on it as well, but within the restrictions of what the director wants. So I think just being open-minded is good. Don't take things too personally. Um, sure, like maybe you might be discouraged sometimes, like you might not have knocked a section out of the ballpark just yet because it's your first job. Um, don't be too hard on yourself like personally I messed up a lot like when I first started uh, I got chewed out by my first director Butch I turned in some kind of half-assed boards and uh, he pulled me into his office and he was like hey I gotta talk to you I'm like okay and I go in and he literally just <laughs> he he drew like the he kind of like scattered my boards on his table his office table and he was like what the fuck are these? Uh, <laughs> you obviously did not spend any time on like I think like 
I'm not saying like be open to that, but like don't take it too harshly. I think what doesn't kill you should make you stronger. Um, and be open to like criticism. I think. Um, I don't know. Caleb said, kind of has a similar question. He says. Any memories do you like to share of overcoming or dealing with self doubt as you're like learning and coming up? Uh, memories, yeah. I mean, that was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, like, look, even to this day, I'm always self doubting what I do. Um, but I think that's that's part of being an artist, right? Like, you're you're never satisfied with where you're at like there's always more that you can learn there's always more that you can push right um i mean yeah like i, I look at my old boards and sometimes i'm like man like what was i thinking <laughs> but i mean because i kept pushing like i'm able to see that now you know but i'm sure even from five years from now like i still want to keep looking at my boards today you know and be like what was i thinking you know like i i, I want to keep getting better and better and just keep pushing myself um so i think there's no cure for self-doubt but um i guess i'll say like be confident too like self-doubt is there to keep you in check like you, you can't always be confident you know but sometimes believe in your work a little bit you know um you're hired for a reason and if you're hired, like you're there for a reason, your work is probably you know, super good. <laughs> um, and even if, like, even if you're still trying to break it in, like, don't let it be beat up on you. Like, I think it's, like I said, accept the criticism and then grow from it. Like, because when you hit rock bottom, there's only one way, and that's out, right? So. No, I agree with you. Yeah. I think a lot of the people that don't improve are the ones that take it personally. They're like, oh, yeah. that person's wrong. Like, fuck them. I don't agree with their note. I'm not going right. to change. And you're like, oh, you, as soon as you feel that way, like, you're done. Like, yeah. you're, you've are you hit a peak and you'll never get better. So, if anything, the directors are always trying to help you improve because it makes their lives easier. They're not going to tell you something bad or they're not going to... Hopefully they're not going to try to attack you because they actually want you to do better so that they right. don't have to do work. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, if they do attack you, that's the sign of a bad director. So. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, usually, yeah, like you said, they want you to do your best work so they don't have to do your work for you, you know? So. I think also in this kind of like day and age, you won't find too many people that are going to be like, you suck. Like, they'll tell it to you a lot nicer than that. I think... We were maybe we might have been the last generation of artists coming up where it, it was okay to be like that, right? To be like, because I I've had similar experiences with other directors where they're like this is shit, and they tell you, and you're like, uh -huh. you suck, and I'm just like, okay, oh, <laughs> but it's true. Like we're we're bad. I was bad, and so like I like it better that way to be honest, because at least then it's very it's very clear where the bar is like mm, you don't have to second yeah. guess yourself you right. automatically know that they right. want you to do better yeah uh min May says how did you respond to butch <laughs> i think i'd be too terrified to think mm. man i think i remember i was yeah i mean i was terrified too i didn't say much i was just like he was just like how long does this take you i was like what do I say? Do I say it took me like all week or do I say it took me like last night? And I was like, uh, yeah, it took me like last night. He was like, and he basically was just like, look, man, you can't do this. Like, you got to be a professional. Like, you got to, you know, put in your best work. Like, like these backgrounds look really half-assed and like kind of like do a better job, man. Like, do a better job next time. And it was good for me. Like, I needed that kick in the ass, like, to kind of, like, get me to work harder, you know, and stop doing things, like, literally the night before. And uh, after that, I never turned in something where he scattered my board on his table. So, <laughs> like, I honestly, I, I thank him for that all the time. Like, it was it was a really good lesson, I think. Um, 
just you know being upfront and honest about my work like that was that was good if you don't know what butcher looks like he's like six feet four he's huge when he sits behind a desk do you guys remember that show dinosaurs with like the styracosaurus that is the boss uh <laughs> like if, if the screen is like this big he's like this big behind the table like he's a big guy and he he's intimidating he's, he's very intimidating he's intimidating <laughs> But he's a really nice dude. Uh, I think he only wants the best out of any artist that he works with. Like even if he yells at you or whatever, like it's out of a good place. So yeah, um, if you do a good job, he'll tell you like that's not bad. Yeah, and it's not even yelling. It's not even yelling. It's more just kind of like reprimanding, like <laughs> <laughs> like yo, like what is this? Like so he he didn't yell at me at all. It was just more. What is this? You know, yeah. what, is this, what is this stuff? So, no, he's great. He's yeah. I, he's a legend. He is, yeah. Yeah, he worked on the Batman animated series, right? He worked on a ton of show, like all this the Bruce Tim stuff. Yeah. and he was the one that I, I remember running into him a couple of years ago, and he's like, I was like, oh, what are you up to now? He's like, oh, I'm watching Naruto. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's watching Naruto. And I was like, what? You're watching anime? Because he's the type that would know. I never thought I would watch anime, but I said, yeah, I gotta keep up with this stuff. You know, like, you know, stuff is changing all the time. You have to, like, keep up with the times. I'm like, oh, man, Butch, you're like a, a fountain of, like, wisdom. <laughs> yeah, that guy's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I bet he remembers you. No, he, he does. I, I, I worked with him again last year. On, oh, shit! On, at, at WB. So, for just like a freelance thing. It was, it, was a, it was a project that Chris Palmer was on. Butch was on that too. Yeah, Butch. Oh. Butch was the executive producer. So, um, yeah. So it was cool. What do you say to you then? He dug my boards. Like, yeah. <laughs> he throws them out on the table. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is bad, but the Michael Jackson bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, chef. <laughs> it's just like a USB. It slides across yeah, the table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, it's 10.04. Oh, okay, last little, if you guys have any more questions, put them in the chat. We're, we'll wrap up soon. Um, Chad says, maybe a weird question. Age and the industry, does it matter? Changing careers from games to animation industry, I feel like a lot of pros nowadays are half my age. I feel like, I feel like age only matters in the sense of your physical capabilities <laughs> yeah but otherwise it shouldn't matter to me i think you can be 50 years old and like if you have like kick-ass boards people will hire you, you know? yeah i think it just tends to be that in relation with age like someone older might not physically be able to keep up with like the amount of work that they have to do versus with like a younger person who can you know pull those late hours and like do that work um, they don't have like a family to go home to right yeah have, exactly like... yeah so i guess those are the only differences that i see but otherwise it's like it's on the portfolio man like and your work yeah because uh, there's a lot of people that go from games to animation and back to games it's not the two fields are very much intertwined. Like Eugene said, as long as your work's good, someone will hire you. They're always needing... If they always need good people. It's very... It's, if you have good work, it's only a matter of time before you get hired. Maybe you don't know the right person or maybe they're not looking, but if it's good, you'll get picked up eventually. Right. Location and the industry... Being outside of the hub cities, do teams and studios really toss resumes portfolios if you're not in the area? Yes and no. I feel like I feel like they'll freelance you boards if you're out of the state. Right? Yeah, I feel right? like they'll freelance to you, and then if you do a good job, they'll maybe offer you a full time if you want to move in, whatever. And like honestly, if you can't they'll probably find workarounds where you can do, you can be a little bit more free time from where you are. But I feel like most, like, I remember, I think Winton's not from here, right? He's from like Florida or something. Atlanta. At Atlanta. Yeah. Right? Um, and the, I think Grace Lou is not from around here either. Like, I think they all 
move to LA. So, I mean, yeah, moving to LA is optimal, but I think if they if the studio really likes your work, they're going to find a way to work with you. So, yeah, if you get freelance from someone, kill the freelance. Like, do it really well so that they'll want to give you more freelance, and then eventually they'll be like, okay, you're good. Let's bring you in, or we'll make you an offer and be like, hey, do you want to come and work in LA, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, move to get a job. But don't move before you have a job. Uh, I think it's just being in LA is easier to get a job, but you know it's not cheap here. <laughs> yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's your portfolio that matters the most. Um, like I said, like I don't think location matters. It shouldn't matter too much. I mean, it does. It does, but um. Like, if they want you, they want you. They're going to want to work with you. Um, like, I've gotten, I've gotten some offers from outside of the country. So, like, and, you know, so it, it goes both ways, you know. Like, if, like, a studio out in, like, Korea or Australia or whatever, like, wants to hire you, like, they'll want to try to find a way to work with you, you know. I agree. I think there are... I heard some people, what they're doing is they moved down as like a group, like a bunch of Canadian people came down at one time and they're all living like in the same apartment. And that was kind of like how they made it work somehow. Mm. I, to be honest, I don't know how people break into the industry outside of LA. Cause like, it's really hard to, even for us living in LA, finding a place is so hard. Right. <laughs> so I don't, yeah, like Eugene said, if you can work remotely, that's totally an option. I right. think there's so much that you can do remotely right. now. Actually, a good example is actually me, because on Motor City, I was working from New York the entire time. So, like, they like Titmouse liked my boards enough that they were willing to work with me, and they're like, "Yeah, sure. Like, you don't need to like work in house at Titmouse." Like. It's as long as you get your boards in on time, you know, like you can work remotely if you want. So I was like, cool. Like, so I don't know. I don't, hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> I think if it's good, it's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I think that is 10, 10. Um, you guys know where to find Eugene. Find him on Instagram and Twitter here. Oh, no, this way. <laughs> yeah, it's like reverse. He comes onto the stream on Friday sometimes. Last Friday was his birthday, so if you haven't wished him a belated happy birthday, please <laughs> get on that. Um, what uh, oh, Yeah, he'll be for the Halloween. I guess he'll be here maybe for the Halloween stream. Yeah. I'll send out a message yeah. to everyone. And... Yeah, you should look. keep an eye out for the project he's working on now. We can't talk about it, but it's pretty cool. Nah. Big thumbs up energy. Thank very, you. very cool. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> oh, Sung Shin says, see you guys. This was the first on my YouTube feed. Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, is there no, a... I had a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for asking a ton of great questions. I thought they were all great. Um, yeah. You're natural. I'm like, oh, I should bring you on more often. <laughs> this is so much fun having I, other people talk. I don't know. What would I talk about next? I feel like I talked about it all now. <laughs> you would just review storyboards. You would do your day job. But... All right, sure, sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, if you guys, if you would have me again, I'd be down to look at some boards. So, mm, yeah. What is next week? Tuesday? We'll talk. Yeah. I'll have my people contact our people. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because I, I think it's always interesting to see other people's take on storyboards. Because mm. like, like the way you're talking about how like you go about your process, I was like, oh, it's interesting. And it helps me learn. And it also helps me like see different methods of storyboarding. Mm -hmm. So hmm, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll review stuff and be like, hmm. I don't want to make you do it if you don't if you're busy or anything. Uh, I mean it's it sounds fun. It sounds fun to me because I've I've never done this before, so um, it's nice to kind of give back to people, you know, with what I learned. Yeah. So that's the way I feel. I'm like yeah. I just 
in the right place, right time. So I was mm-hmm. like, well, here you guys go. It's, um, do you and Eugene stream now? Sure. I mean, oh, well, it's it's Diwu's stream. <laughs> I mean, like if if he's busy, I'm not going to be like, you have to get on here, <laughs> by the time. It's Diwu <laughs> and Eugene. <laughs> Sometimes. I mean, Out- outro joke. <laughs> no, I I don't. I have no. Oh, outro joke. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh oh. This is. Let me look for another. Um. Another Halloween type joke. I'm so stupid. This is so stupid. What's what's mega B T U E? Mega or oh, big B two E is big thumbs up energy. Oh, <laughs> so I, I made a I actually made a stamp for it. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. I made a stamp for it. Oh shit! Is it in here? Oh no, it might be in the the other one. Oh crap! BG brush, hard pencil. Where is it? I thought I had. It. Let me pass that off. Oh, here. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, that's really good. Yeah, so I it, I got it from Rebecca, actually, because her mom was, like, sending um, her text messages, and she's like, oh, very good job. Big thumbs up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I took it. I was like, yeah, big thumbs up energy. So now I use it. I like it's it. kind of a thing. I like it. Oh, shoot. Um, Yeah, if you want to do storyboard review, I'm totally down, like, I have no problem with that. Yeah. Oh, here's one. What does Dracula say when you give him a present? Oh, oh no. I'm afraid it's super obvious. <laughs> All right, what is it? Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> damn. Not a big fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Raising the stakes, I see. Oh. <laughs> Um, man, damn, I'm out of I'm out of puns for some reason. <laughs> Trying to think, I feel like there's a lot there. Yeah, or just I, I feel like I would no. I'm just looking for an a positive type joke. Oh <laughs> man. Get the thing out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's good. Uh, yeah, I was wearing a shark costume earlier tonight, but it got too hot. Like, I was just sweating it up in here. Oh, where is this? There we go. I was just sweating it up. Yeah. What do you guys want to see next week? Is there anything specific you guys want to learn? Maybe we can think about that in, be- in the in-between times. On off colossal B2E. Uh, yeah, if you guys have anything specifically. Otherwise, we're gonna, well, you can always message either of us on Twitter or Instagram. What you can and can't get away with regarding backgrounds, composition, setting the scene, maybe show your drawing process. Yeah, well, yeah. Point Korea. Wow, there's so much. Fight choreography. Thought that was an action board. These are all good. All solid things to talk about. Cool. Composition and perspective. Um. Yeah, I guess that's there. I feel cool. like that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'll. I'll think of something. Um. I can bring in maybe some existing stuff that I've done, some files. You said Tumi doesn't really stream very well. Or? It chugs like when you draw a line, it kind of goes. Like oh. it takes. I don't know why, because I feel like I have enough RAM on this. It just might be like, well, maybe I. I think it might be a graphics thing because if the graphics through the streamer and then YouTube, it might just be taking up too much graphics. I see. I see. Yeah, I didn't upgrade my graphics card. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get yeah, get the newest uh, GT. Uh, yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, that'll be stuff to talk about. Uh, 
I'm trying sure. to prepare yeah. for CTN X right now, so maybe another review in the future. Yeah, I'd be yeah. interested to see what you think about their boards, like people's sure. boards. Because is it is it boards that is it like uh kind of like homework that you've given them, or is it is it more just personal stuff? It's whatever they get from other classes or oh, what okay. they're doing in school, or maybe yeah. stuff they've finished before. Yeah. Sure. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. War guy, peace out. It's pretty late already. Thanks so much for coming out. No, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. It was fun. Yeah. yeah super fun. Yeah, maybe um, as, I do enjoy just like talking about animation. I wish there was like more time to just talk about animation as a whole. Maybe that'll happen some later time. No. Yeah. Because yeah. like when Arthur is here, it's fun too. I was hoping Arthur or Kirk would walk out. and then Oh, we can all talk about animation. Yeah, but yeah. they're probably busy with stuff. Yeah. Okay, guys. Good night. Make sure you put salt around it. <laughs> put salt? <laughs> salt around the Monopoly mask. <laughs> you know, maybe we'll do all the streams as Monopoly, man. Oh, no. <laughs>